Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and welcome to the latest episode of The Hard Compound Live. Uh, for those of you who don't know, my name is Rich, and I run and operate The Hard Compound, one-stop shop for all things motorsport, uh, four wheels, two wheels, on-road, off-road, uh, with a roof or without, and all the good stuff in between. Uh, and we do that um, via, uh, sorry, by um, uh, putting out uh, race reviews, race previews, um, throwbacks on this day's birthdays, favourite bikes and cars and whatnot, and all, and all that good stuff. And we're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Uh, so do uh, give us a search on all of those. Give us a follow, hit the notification bell, add the hard compound to your hashtags and all that other social media speak. Um, in case you hadn't noticed, we also uh, do live interviews. Um, and we're going to get this one started very, very shortly. Uh, these go out on our Facebook, our Twitter, and our YouTube. Um, they're all automatically saved as soon as we finished, so you can go back and watch them at your leisure. Um, obviously on YouTube, they're right there. On Facebook, go onto the Hard Compound page, into the video section, and they'll all be there. Uh, just to give you a, a quick taster of uh, some people that we've spoken to, um, a number of um, racers from the Bennett's British Superbike Championship. Um, uh, we've spoken with the six-time champion, Mr. Shane Byrne. Um, and we've spoken with the likes of um, uh, Christian Idden, uh, Ryan Vickers, Brad Jones, and Bjorn Esmond. We've also spoken to a number of people from the uh, F1 sports car, IndyCar kind of world, um, uh, going back over the last couple of years. I've uh, spoken with uh, Mr. David Brabham, uh, Alex Caffey, Perry McCarthy, Mark Blundell, um, uh, Stephanie Hansen, Derek Warwick, Rick Asilo, Carl Vendlinger, Emmanuel Pirro, and the like. And also uh, we've spoken with some of our friends from across the pond, uh, the likes of um, Ari Landijk, uh, Mr. Danny Sullivan, uh, James Hinchcliffe, um, Alex Polo, Will Power, um, uh, Brian Herter, Willie T. Ribs, Danny Sullivan, etc., etc., and the honour and the privilege of speaking with Mario Andretti and Jackie X. Um, but if you're tuning in tonight, chances are you're a BTCC fan. I certainly am. Um, and we've spoken with a number of people from uh, the uh, from the media side, the team management side, and of course from drivers as well. Uh, just last week, we spoke with Alan Hyde. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, we've spoken with um, 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 Louise Goodman. Excuse me. Uh, and we've spoken with team bosses Dick Bennett and Justina Williams, very successful. And we've also spoken to a lot of drivers, um, the uh, likes of um, uh, Tom Chilton, uh, Jake Hill, uh, Ollie Jackson, Mick Parfit, Jade Edwards, Michael Kreese, uh, Dan Rowbottom, uh, TCI UK champion, Chris Smiley, uh, and some legends from the past, uh, the likes of um, Rob Gravitt, uh, John Clennon, Steve Soper, Gabriele Tarquini, uh, Tom Coronel from World Touring Cars, uh, Rickard Rydell, Andy Prio, Frank Sittner, Etc. Etc. And Matt Neal. And tonight's guest has a bit of history with the latter, as you will very well know. Um, I'm going to bring him in right now. An absolute legend of the BTCC um, and British Motorsport podcasts, and uh, an all-round lovely chap and a brilliant, brilliant uh, guest to have on. Very, very excited. So, going to bring him in right now. Please extend me. Please join me in extending a very, very warm welcome to the legend. That is Mr. Jason Plato. Look at you getting all tongue twisted with, 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 with your spoonerisms and stuff. Oh, I tell you, it's this. <laughs> all the names and words, and all the words are in my head that don't come out of the mouth properly. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, Mr. Plato, how are you, sir? Uh, yeah, 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 good, good, good. I mean, you know, it's that awful time of the year, isn't it? When, I mean, it's a double awful time of the year for me, you know, an experience I've not. I've not, uh, uh, I'm still getting used to, but, but, but normally in any normal year, it's that awful time of the year when everything ends and, um, and it's still quite a long way to things beginning again, even though, you know, in a normal year, you, you never really stop, but there is this lull and it's just an awful time of the year. Yeah. The weather closes in, starts pissing down the rain, yeah. the lights get dark. It's just that time of year, isn't it? So yeah. And, you know, and an odd time of the year, one which I've not experienced before, uh, which is, um, uh, you know, where, where, where I am at the moment, we, we, which is a, which is a strange, strange fit, fit feeling, strange feeling. Yeah. It must be odd sort of not having one eye on next year for the first time in however many years it's been. Um, I can't imagine how, uh, how odd. That 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 must be obviously uh, you know the BTCs and other you know motorsport and whatever has been your life for twenty five plus years, isn't it? So it must feel, feel very strange. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, I'll, I'll be a lie if I say that I haven't got eye on, you know, an eye on stuff, and I'm not working away behind the scenes on, you know, on trying to put deals together. But, you know, am I trying to put deals together for touring cars? But, um, uh, my, my aspiration of a deal is probably not achievable. Sure. In sure. what I, in what I, in what I, in what I want to try and put together, but, but, but never. So I still am trying to do it, um, but I don't, I don't, I don't <laughs> yeah, I don't think you know the way things are, the way the, you know, the motor industry has has changed over you know the last ten years. I think it's, pr I think it's probably highly unlikely. You know, I can pull together a, a three plus minimum three plus year manufacturer deal and, and you know and, and that and that 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 sexes me up you know because then i can provide you know you know all all, all the be benefits that i can deliver because of my experience with a manufacturer um which then adds value to to the program and it adds um something to get your teeth into sure. rather than just turning yeah. up jumping in the car driving and that, that's great don't get me wrong but it's the multi-year manufacture thing which really gets me excited and that's where yeah. probably i'm at my best actually and and you know those days uh, you know if, if i'm probably being realistic are long long gone but i still can't help myself trying to pull something <laughs> together saying. but yeah, it's 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 it's, it's, thing. it's probably a, a waste of time. But do, do you know what? I've got time on my hands. I'm trying to see what I can pull together. Uh, but but not just for tour, touring cars. Actually, F funny if not primarily not for touring cars, but for for uh, for other for other forms of <laughs> motorsport. I think I'm probably grown up enough. I'm mature enough now to try GTs. I think. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Although I probably I love it. GT racing. I love it. But pro probably um. I mean, I did hear it. I did hear r rumors and and um, you know conversations that. I mean, I heard this a few a few years ago, which turned out not to be true. And that is when, when I went when I turned fifty, then I automatically go to a bronze. Well, all that sort of stuff didn't really mean anything to me because I've never needed to go through the seeding process to do what I do. So I, anyway, because I wasn't back, you know, five years ago thinking about doing GTs, but but it, you know, it resonated a few times this last year, more more than a few actually, you know, multiple multiple times where it was like, mate, the moment you turn fifty five, you are immediately a bronze, and actually keeping right. abreast with what's going on, a lot of the guys who were bronze, <coughs> excuse me, who who are you know gentlemen you know amateurs who are now getting good have now been elevated to silver much right. of their disdain actually so bronzes are, are uh, you know now what i believe to be the case is you know the way gts are it's mainly you know it's it's, it's underpinned by gentlemen enthusiastic high net worth individuals who pay for everything well well you know, a lot of them have gone to sit silver, which then means the bronze category is quite valuable. If sure. if you can be, you know, effectively labelled a Billy, a fifty-five-year-old Billy who's got a bit of experience. <laughs> but I've just heard the other day that that's not exactly true. That I won't automatically go to a bronze. I have to oh, fight right. it. But obviously, I, I will f fight that. So yeah, you know, potentially, yeah. my value in 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 um, in GT, where you know, if you've got to have you know, you've got to have a bronze, you've got to have a silver, maybe there's a gold in there, then, you know, I'm quite I'm quite a good bronze, I would have thought, or above average, at least. Well, yeah, I think, <laughs> I think above average is the minimum. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So, yeah. so who knows? I mean, I'm working on all, all, sort, all sorts of stuff, as well as just straight commercial, you know, business bits and bobs. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, it's a very strange... Uh, you know, Brad, Brands Hatch, even though I, I, you know, I geared myself up for it, was, you know, honestly, was quite an, a, quite an, quite a, quite a lovely, but also quite a, uh, I, no, it was a lovely experience, actually, but it was a very odd experience. I'm sure. Um, yeah, I'm sure. But it was, you know, it, it you know, it, uh, 
you know, and I'm sure I'm sure if you ask this to to, to lots of you know professional drivers who do, who do this year in year out, you know, emotion is the enemy, mm. and it's been an, an enemy of mine since I was 12 years old. It, it, insofar as you know, when you when you when you're racing, when you're at the circuit, when you're there for practice, emotion's bad news. It's got to be you know clear thought. You know, cl clarity of mind, determination, uh, and there's no time for emotion. Yeah, and and um, you know, so much so, uh, a very early age in karting. You know, I didn't take girlfriends away racing with me because actually that that's an emotional part, and I've got no time for that. I'm there to do a job, yeah. and and as time goes on, you know, that just becomes normal. You just you know, you, you 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 learn how to subconsciously suppress any emotional activity that you've got going amongst you. And I'll be honest, you know, I allowed the emotion to 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 enter my mind at, at Brands Hatch, and and actually it was because of what was going on, it was it was quite a powerful thing. It was quite it was, it was um it it was it was amazing actually, really amazing, really amazing. I mean, that's entirely understandable. I mean, obviously, you know, you've been in the BTCC and around it for so long. Of course, you know, it's going to you know, with the best will in the world, the emotion's going to get there. Of course, it is. Um, I mean, there was a lot of emotion just watching from out, from, you know, from behind the fences. It was, uh, yeah, it was an amazing thing. It was an amazing thing. Because um, when Tom oh, Ingram well, came out, that's nice. You... That's nice. I tell you, I need, I need, I nearly, I got, I got pulled. I got, um, I can't remember if it was on the radio or before race two, but they said, it might have been on the radio actually, as I was coming in. They said, oh, would you stop at the patch um, because they want you to, you know, put your hand in the magic balls and pull out the... Yeah. And you know what? I so wanted to be naughty. I mean, <laughs> honestly, I, I so you. wanted to just tip the balls, tip, tip them over and just, you know, throw, throw the, the, you know, the, the, the wheel of, the, the ball of fortune, just throw it up and go, Steve, you choose. But <laughs> you know what? I just couldn't bring myself to be that naughty. <laughs> Yeah. We would have loved that. Everyone well, I, well, yeah, I, I would have, and I'm disappointed I didn't, to be fair, but hey-ho. <laughs> well, if they invite you back to do it, just do it next time. Say, oh, I was going to do this at Brands, and then big elbow straight off the onto the floor. I, feel, I think Steve would deal with it. He's a pro, isn't he? He's fine. He's uh, exceptionally good. He is very, very good. Very good. Um, <clears throat> just a quick comment in there from Michael Wollacott. Will this be saved so we can watch later? Yes, Michael, it will. Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, it will be on there. You can come on back and watch whatever oh, you so, miss. So just so I'm aware that on your screen, you can see people's comments. I can see in comments. In real time. Yeah. Wow. Which, I, which I'm going to try and grab. It's how how do I get at those then? Well, they so should be them in real time too. What, what, what do I need to look at? Uh, they should be just off on the right hand side. I'm just glancing over there now. They should be there automatically. I spoke with Alan Hyde last week and he saw them straight off the bat. Um, I'm just going to. Ah, there they are. I was on widescreen. Yeah. There we go. That's why it was on Press widescreen. Button. There we are. There's all the comments. So um, while we're on the subject of the comments, thank you everyone for tuning in. Uh, we've got Craig Homer, Marion Speed, Lisa Reinhart, Gianluca Bandini. Hello. June Godfrey, Sharon Lynch, John Kemp, many, many other people, and Oliver Taylor. I want to give a th quick shout out to Oliver Taylor because he is the man who put the cool video out when we did the announcement. So thank you, Oliver. You're much better at it than, uh, than I am. And while we're here, we've got Kevin Whitewood, who runs British Touring Car Chat on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Very, very good group. Go and check those out if you are that way inclined. Best I'll tell you what I'd like to do, program. Rich, and you might be able to help me. Oh, on yeah. my screen, I can see me and you. I don't want to see me. I just want to see you. How can I get rid of me? Um, I don't think we can do that because oh, if mind. I press a button, it's either me and then we can't hear you or it's you and we can't oh, hear you. Oh, okay. So I don't, I don't, I, I've tried it before and it sort of flips <laughs> around and drops and changes. Don't worry. Don't, don't don't worry. I just want to, I'm looking at the comments there. Yeah, we've got many, many, many comments, and there's all talk about oh, going to Speedworks in the Toyota. They've got a seat. Ricky Collard's gone. Oh my goodness! All kinds of rumours. Goodness me! People want you back in the BTCC. There's lots and lots of people. Well, do you, well, do you know what? If I'm if I'm really truly honest, and and um, you know, the, please don't read anything into this. This is just you know to give people an insight. Mm. <clears throat> um. Do you know what? It's a really difficult thing for me to 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 say. You know, I've done my bit. It's a really hard thing to do because, 
you know, uh, I love I love the series. I love the championship. I love what it stands for. I love the racing. I think it's unique around the world. I think I think um, I think it's one of the hardest chat championships to, um, you know, even to get in the top five. Uh, you know, on a race by race basis, it's it's a really brilliant series. And you know, of course, over the years, we you know, everyone it doesn't matter who which drivers they are, we all have our whinges and moans about how things just to just you know not manipulated because that's not fair, but it just always ends up it's pretty close at the end of the year, and and that ain't that ain't that ain't uh through trickery or 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 underhand business that's just because it's so it's so close and the regs are clever and the point system's clever and the you know the the you know success ballast when we had it that that worked and all these little mechanisms which which they you know alan gow and his team and they come under enormous flack it does the job and it makes it makes it really tricky and very difficult to be successful at, yeah. uh, and and the, the racing is full on. You know, it's it. Uh, sometimes it boils over, and and we'll all you know we we will all agree that sometimes it gets a little bit too heated, and and you know the the milk milk burns, and it and it and it, and it you know it fucks your hob. <laughs> you know what I mean? But actually. <laughs> It's amazing racing, and that's you know coming from you know my my my, my earliest uh, you know touch point with motorsport, other than when I you know when I was you know six or seven, and my dad used to take me to watch Formula One, but I know to sit on his lap. I mean, I remember sat on on a on a weekend in front of the TV watching Bathurst, and I was. Mate, I was six or seven. I can remember all that. Yeah. Uh, but um, it's the only form of motorsport that I've seen as an as a grown up, and I mean that from you know the age of like sixteen. That that has that resembles the cut and thrust of kart racing at yeah. at the at the very highest level, and karting at the highest level is literally off the scale. The best racing you'll ever see, and the best the best racing you'll ever be in. Well, and, I remember um, the one. was it the supercars? It was on the I think it was at Silverstone years ago, back at eighty eight Martin Hines and all that lot. The super Yeah, I mean that, that, that that's great. I'm not gonna knock that because Martin that Martin was a was a very dear supporter of mine. God bless him. Um yeah. you know, Bonkers. I drove for Martin for a few for a few years as a works driver. <laughs> I mean the two fifties were amazing to watch, incredible. Yeah. And and here's a fact, and the, and I can't remember which year it was, but and it was probably in the Oh, it would have been late eighties or early nine, late I think it was late eighties that a two fifty twin supercar went round Monaco faster than an F one car. Wow! I mean, get get your head around that, and, that, and that's not bull bullshit. That's true. But anyway, that's they crazy. were incredible to watch. Wow! But you know, it's a non gearbox, um, hundred cc or one three five, which was the top echelon, but that came in a bit, you know, late eighties. But what hundred cc, which you know, Senna, Fullerton, mm. I mean, everyone who's who's done nothing cut their teeth on, you yeah. know, uh, you know, Mc, McNish, Hamilton, um, uh, Frankiti, uh, Coulthard, you know, non gearbox hundred cc karting was insanely competitive and you needed to be on you need to be you know you could have the equipment you could have everything you could have the right tires the right the right chassis with the right people the you know the right carburetors and they are the right engines you could have everything but i tell you what if you weren't on your game you'd come 20th yeah it was incredible so so the race you know the, the racing and it was aggressive uh, uh it was it was it was pin sharp that's the racing which that's what lit my you know turned the light on to life for me and touring cars gives me a similar sort of feeling so so to walk to, not to, not to walk away but i am kind of walking away i'm kind of saying look i've done my bit um it's, it's tough because i still i love it i really lo lo love it and you know this year um uh, and you know we'll, we'll probably get into this bit l later on in the conversation but you know having had from where my career has been 
where it dropped i picked it up it dropped a bit picked up and then it got into the you know i got into some deals which weren't right for me and and they didn't they didn't work, work out right and um I, you know to to join btc this year rekindled my my love of it because i trusted everyone around me and it's really difficult it would have been a lot easier to walk away at the end of 21 if i'm really honest it would right. have been quite easy actually uh, most certainly you know out of 10 it would have been 6 to walk away at 21 i.e. 6 being uh, i'll think about it it's 9 now but at the end of yeah. the DMR years, it was like zero. Would it be yeah, awesome? yeah, just in, the world. in fact, I did. I, 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 walked yeah. away. I walked away. Um, wow. Anyway, so so where I am now, it's really tough because I, you know, I really, I really love that team. I, I think I think it's some brilliant people there. Yeah. Um, uh, they do they do the job right. Um, it, it's a it's a great place to be, and I've loved my year. Now, you know, I've not had the most competitive year. But, you know, there have been moments, more often than not, actually, where, where the pace has been there and I felt good about the job I did. Okay, I might have made a mistake or something went wrong. But nevertheless, when I went home, I know that. Actually, I look at all the times, analyze, I go, oh, do you know what? I was on the, I was on the button there. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, you get 54, stroke 55 years old. That's quite important because, you know, yeah. a lot of these guys, mate, a lot of them are, 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 are half my age and some. Mm. Yeah, well, yeah, it, yeah, we've got little yeah, we've got shit. Terrific young team. And, <laughs> <laughs> and you know, you've got guys like George Gamble, who I think is like 13 or something, and he's gone and won a race, you know, it's like, oh, wow. Um, but uh, yeah, um, so just something I saw in the comments, and I need to do this. Uh, Katie Eames, she sent a message. It's her birthday today, and she said, Can you please wish Katie a happy birthday? How, how old is she? Uh, I don't know. Katie, pop it in the comments. Say how old you are, please. I know we shouldn't ask, but... No, no, we've got to, because that that, 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 that that will be a... Uh, <laughs> that, that, that'll be a directive to... to. Um, it depends on what kind of greeting it is. <laughs> 32. 32. Uh, Katie, you're, you're still, you're still, you're still very young. Um, uh, what is your birthday day? Happy birthday, Katie. Do, you know, do, do, you remember that Baz Luhrmann song? Sunscreen, you use sunscreen. Remember that, yeah. Do Dude. one thing every day which scares you. There we go. Yes, Dan. Absolutely. <laughs> That's God. There's some questions coming in. Right, guys, we are going to come to the questions. I promise you. Just on the subject of karting, I'm glad that you said what you did because we had Terry Fullerton on as a guest last year. Did and you? He said exactly the same thing. He just said, "Oh, it just had everything." That's why he loved it, you know. And he spoke about oh, it. He, he was. He was. He still is a very special human being, but. Yeah, he, he. I drove for Ter Terry for for a year actually, mm, right? And um, I learned <clears throat> I learned a lot from him. He's really quite something, is Ter Terry. And you know what? He was probably the you know when 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 Set Senna first found his mojo was in karting, and he was really quite something. Yeah. Ter Terry was his equal, if not, well, if not. And if you if you listen to the you know if you watch the set the Senna movie, yeah, yeah. Senna makes reference to Ter Terry. Terry yeah, right. was yeah. Terry was not only was he was he quick, but he was crafty. He was yeah. a great, he had great race craft. He had a brilliant brain. He was quick thinking, um, and and he had he had this insane, uh, insane will to be the best and anyone in where, where, when you can kind of retire from driving or you know it was you know i was very very fortunate and it wouldn't happen without my mum and dad actually um you know to to be part of his stable if you like right and that just 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 to look in his eyes you you, you know you got something he, he was he was amazing terry so that's great that you interviewed him Oh, he was brilliant i mean you know i, I said when i was a kid you know before i discovered btcc in 88 um well this is a picture up here this is actually Ayrton which, which way there this big picture here is Ayrton in the Lotus and it was him the, and the camera's at a shit angle I can't see anything I'll just do that there you go there's it. Ah, there we go yeah that's a good picture yeah, yeah. um Ayrton Ayr Ayr and Nigel were my heroes and obviously I heard about Terry but um yeah he said that when Ayrton said that you know 
and when that went out in the uh, yeah, in the yeah. documentary. Um, he said that he never knew so many people knew his phone number. <laughs> 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 so his phone just went ballistic. Um, he had messages. He was invited on chats like this. He was oh, yeah. invited the auto sport. And he said, I hadn't done anything for 20 years apart from build carts. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> but, funny enough, I remember when, when, when that documentary went, went out, uh, I can remember uh, the auto sport uh, show at the NEC the the winter after it was released mm. uh, T- terry was obviously booked for everything and i bumped into him we had a we had, we had a cu- cup of tea and reminisced a little bit but i'll tell you terry was ace but there's another guy who actually was arguably arguably better than T- T- terry who no one's ever heard of a guy called mike wilson that's a bar and he was a he was a, he he was literally mind blowing in a cart. Yeah. became became a legend in karting. became a factory driver. Um, he he was really special, and 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 he was every bit every bit as good, if not better, than the very finest art I've ever seen. And wow. it's such a shame. I mean, he dabbled with 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 cars. Didn't quite work for him. Um, yeah, probably wasn't the right time. But he he was he was quite exceptional. Wow, I mean, I mean, literally exceptional. Just up there, right? I, I mean, literally bonkers. <clears throat> and you know, I, I, and I, I can say this from from uh, actual experience that in I'm trying to think of what year it was. It might have been, it might have been 1984, 1985. I can't remember, but anyway, I had a I had a very good chassis deal. Uh, I had works carburetors by Ro- Ro- Roger Aby, who did. Michael Schumacher's carburetors, and there wasn't many, many of those around. I had the best tyres in the business, and I had a, a Bridgestone tyre contract, of which there was about ten guys in the world got tyres, and there was the rest got tyres that weren't mm-hmm. as good. Um, and I had I had great engines, and you know, on, on his day, in fact, there's a cu- couple of guys who can say this about. On his day, Michael, and there wasn't many days that it wasn't like every weekend he was like this, but there were occasional when he had a purple patch. Literally, the whole paddock may as well have fucked off and gone home. It, it was that. Oh, yeah, it, it wasn't massive. It was a, it was a, a couple of tents. But I tell you what, we we couldn't we couldn't find it. Okay. And another one I remember this was in one three five, which was. They cr- they create this crazy formula called one three five you know direct drive, bit big bigger engine, and I raced against I can't remember the name of the circuit it was up it was not up near Hamburg, and uh, uh, Alessandro Zanardi was the boy, and I tell you what, I mean literally breathtaking not only breathtaking on the track but he had this like I mean he was you know handsome. He was kept himself to himself. It was amazing. I mean, amazing. So out of all the people that, you know, and there's a couple of others. Like there's a guy called Frank Van Eglum, who was literally ruled the roost when I was 13 in Europe. No one's ever heard of him. He was incredible. There's been lots of people. And also some, 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 you know, some, some contemporaries of mine who actually should have gone on to really great things. Um, who I really rate highly, highly as special. Kelvin Burt. Yeah. Absolute. Yeah. Beautiful. Really, really great. Right. Fucking lazy. <laughs> Didn't work hard enough, but uh, <laughs> masses of talent. Masses of talent. Wow. Yeah. So there's a, there's a, there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's quite a few <clears throat> who are be- better than me, much better than me. <laughs> But, but, there's always, but there's always a few, you know, there's always a few that, you know, don't quite sort of make it. Um, that's a question there from uh, Lyndon Belt. We're going to come to that. Oh, <laughs> hey, no, that was last year at Brands. We're going to come to that. That That's a good thing to finish on. We're going to come back to that, Lyndon. No, that's last year at Brands, you told when I asked you your way out your car, you try, you told me to fuck off. <laughs> 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 is, that, is, that, is that from oh, you... is that from Lyndon Wayne Belt? That's not a real name, is it? I'd, we'll have to see. I'm, I'm sure it is. But yeah, apparently you said, "Are you going to retire?" And that was your response. <laughs> yeah, but I think you, I, I, I took that as from motorsport. Obviously, I'm not. Yeah, obviously, obviously. Anyway, his name's not Lyndon Wayne Belt. It's Lyndon Overly Tight Belt. 
I would have thought. <laughs> I didn't say that. I, I was going to let that go. Anyway, can say, come on, questions, questions, questions. <laughs> That's fine. Smashing. Right. I mean, I mean, you touched on the karting thing. Um, touched on the, oh, there's lots of love in the comments. This is great. Thank you very much. Um, uh, I mean, you touched on karting. That's obviously where you started. I mean, uh, I've done this a little bit of research. Your father was a car dealer. Was he, was he a car dealer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You were always around motoring. And I've, I, I saw somewhere that you got a kart as sort of a, a payment on you know he, he your father was owed something and he said oh yeah, this yeah. Said, was that true no, no it is true yeah i mean yeah motor racing was always something i mean this was before we did any karting you know uh, like i said i can remember yeah watching the grand prix with with with, with actually with, with my mum as well um and at the time you know in fact all the way through my childhood my, my dad was in the motor trade but at that particular time he was the what what you would call now as dealer principal, but back then he was the owner of the ga garage, and it was basically BMW Northeast. He had a BMW dealership, and um, yeah, most weekends I was there, you know, speaking with the me mechanics and just just wanted to be around cars and oil and stuff. Anyway, um, I would have been. 10 and a half 11 something like that and someone owed me old man a few hundred quid didn't have the readies and, and like a few hundred quid back in those days at like early 80s like like no early in that 70 78 79 was probably like 1500 quid two grand now right. anyway they didn't have the money but they had like a, an old an old race cart so he said well, i'll tell you what i'll have that and it, i can remember it. i've got I've still got pictures of it it was an old it was an old BM ch chassis with a bull taco engine. Fucking horrible thing. And next thing, this arrived. My dad's uh, like, oh, I'm just there. And I dad come bloody on. It was basically, he, he bought it for, so him and his sales manager could dick around around the forecourt. Because back in those days, the petrol pumps at the dealership were shut over the weekend. It was shut on the su Sunday. Right. And they had an in and out, chain across. <coughs> that's what happened back in those days and you were so Brilliant. so we were there on the weekend and 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 they just couldn't start the thing and i can remember and we, i've laughed about this with my dad and, and actually this idea carried on until we really understood what was going on you know he'd have the oxy set settling out like heating up the spark plug putting it back in trying to i mean just because you know that's we did, didn't know what we we're doing and the mixture on the car was all wrong yada yada, yada. anyway i can remember this we got the thing going what one day and I just thought, wow, this is amazing. Anyway, cut forward, a, a, you know, a, a few weeks, we found, because my, my old man was in the car trade, not not far, from, about four or five miles from where we lived, one of his pals um, owned Time Car Auctions. And obviously, car auction, there's a massive, great big car park in front of the auction house, which was up the road. So we used to go up there in the evenings and get the, and, and, and get this start with the oxycetylene. <laughs> And literally, we'd get the thing get going, and we'd, we'd, we'd mess around the car park. And I was, what, ten, 10 and a half, 11, maybe? And, you know, and it wasn't it wasn't for me. It was for my dad and his mate. And I convinced him to let me have a go. And, he, and anyway, during this period, we found, we discovered there was, a, you know, a guy called Brian Chivers, who was a, a motor dealer mate of my dad, who then found out my dad had got a cart. He went, well, I go karting. That's what I do. Bloody hell. And, and literally, we connected up, and Brian said, Look, there's a great circuit nor north of Morpeth, which, which was up in North Northumbria, which is, I was living in Newcastle at the time, yeah. um, which is basically where I was brought up. Um, so we went, went up there with Brian, I know, like a proper track. I mean, a few years later, two, three years later, I ended up winning the British Czech Championships at that track. Right. Anyway, we went, we went up there and we had a. Um, I think it was a Vauxhall Viva estate or something. Oh, I love the Viva. My mum the car was on the roof rack and all the bits of shit were in the back with it, you know, plastic jerry cans and stuff. Really? Dad was running around with his mate and I convinced him. I said, look, can I have a go? And he let, he, 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 you know, yeah, yeah, okay. So let me have a go. And I went faster than him. And at that point he went, right, there's something in this. And I found, I found, I found my passion and I loved it. And that's where it all started. And then my first, my first Brilliant. year racing at Felton 
was uh, which is uh, the circuit in up in North Amorpa was 1980. We did a bit of practice in 79. In 1980, we, we I can remember it now. I remember we signed on uh, to the club championship, and I was in a class called Junior Britain, <coughs> skinning Carlisle tyres, 100 cc direct drive, uh, and we signed on. We w- went in there the first race of the year to sign on to the championship, and they said, right, what number do you want? <laughs> and I said, I'll have number one because they showed me a list and nothing was there and said, oh, you can't have that. I said, well, obviously I know because I like most sport. And I looked down the list and the first one empty was number six. And that became mine. And I can remember this in the clubhouse. I can remember it, exactly where it was. And we did the club championship. We won the club championship. And then we started doing, we started charging up and down the country. And it became not, not just mine, but, you know, my, my dad, my mum and our dog and our dog (laughs) and our dog Castle was a Doberman who traveled everywhere, who everybody knew. Um, it became our passion and we spent every weekend we could in, in our little van driving to Somerset, driving to Carlisle, driving to Wombwell in Yorkshire. Wow. That's what we did. And it was mega. And we all of us slept in, in a little, I don't know if you know what an LT28 vat van is. It's a tiny little van, tiny. Okay. tiny. Okay. Me, my mum, my dad, and Castro the dog in the front bit and the carts in the back. And that's wow. what, that, how we rocked. And do you know what? I, we loved it. Loved it. I mean, that's not just the racing, it's the whole experience of traveling and. Uh, no, no, just everything. It was, you know, brilliant connection with, with, with my mum and dad. Now. And, you know, being honest, Fuck, did we have some arguments because mate, you let yourself down there, you mate, you've you've screwed about that corner. But it was really it was just the best ever. Lucky because you know, had I had brothers and sisters, that wouldn't have happened because it wasn't cheap. Uh, I mean, right. nothing compared to today's money. Um, but but it's nevertheless, you know, crazy, the sacrifice they made was extraordinary. Yeah. And and you know what, had I not gone to uh, you know, you know, I went I went to a you know, a, a a a pretty good private school in Newcastle. But had we not gone to that school, I wouldn't have got time off because because I wouldn't have done. But they gave they saw what it was doing, what you know what was going on, and they you know they didn't give me loads of time off. But 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 they did turn a blind eye to a bit. You know, kind of I mean, <laughs> you know, I can remember, I can remember, I can remember <laughs> having to ask the having to ask. The head of my year, I forget which year it was, if I could have time off to do the Cock of the North Championship. Now, <laughs> kid you not, that's what it was called. And it was three races. It was it was yeah. Elton, uh, Wormwell in Yorkshire, and Raura uh, in, in, Car- in, Cumbria, in Cumbria, Carlisle, yeah. in, near Cockermouth. And that was a three-round championship in towards you know the winter times, and it was called the Cock of the North. <laughs> you not. And I can remember going to the team and going, look, Look, I know I've had a bit of time off the summer, but the Cock and Law Championship is really important. And they're just looking at me like I was a like 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 a fruitcake. What are you talking about? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, you know, Brilliant. lucky from a very early age, um, you know, I found my passion, but but also lucky that it just happened to be my mum and dad's passion as well. Yeah, and they loved it. They loved it. And without without with you know. Had it not been their passion, we wouldn't be speaking now. So, I, you know, I, I owe an enormous amount to them. A very, very lucky lad. Very lucky yeah. lad. Which is lovely to hear because, I mean, that's, you know, you know, we've spoken to, well, everyone. I mean, you know, we had Dan Robot on a few weeks back and he said the same thing, you know, without his parents, he wouldn't be racing. And there's so many that have said oh, yeah, that. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. And yeah. you know what? It, it's not it's not so much the, you know, the remortgaging the house, is it? You know, this, that, the other, not having holidays. It's not that. It's the passion. Yeah, they had for it because actually that, I mean, you know what? It kind of keeps you going, doesn't it? And well, you know, motor going, racing, like, even if you're on a purple patch, most of it, if you're wired up the way that most winners are, that you know, second is first loser, yeah, and second ain't to be rejoiced in, in my yeah. book. I'm it, fully you know, with not at that age. So there's an awful lot of shit and bad yeah. feeling. And and actually, it was just me that had the passion. Uh, you know, I, I might have waned away, but you know, I had my mum, my dad. We we just it was what we did, and we loved it. So I mean, yeah, I'll be eternally grateful for them. Really, eternally grateful. 
I'm, I'm really glad you said that about finishing second because I've got two girls. I mean, one's just me too. Four. Me too. How, how old are yours? One's just turned four in July. The other one will be two in oh, January. Fuck me, you've got loads coming your way. Oh, oh yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> just yeah. Wait, mate. <laughs> yeah, got to try and find a way to make some money out of this. Um, but um, I but, mean, forget that. Yeah. You ain't making no money out of it. <laughs> yeah. There's one way. It's going out. Veto. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I've yeah. just, I've literally just got, I mean, my, mine are 12 and 14 now. So obviously I've got, uh, you know, I've got, I've got the, the thing of boyfriends arriving soon. I, I've got, I've got the shotgun and the effigy hanging from the tree. That's all prepped. <laughs> obviously, I'm not going to shoot them, but they just need to know that I do have a gun and I do, <laughs> I, you know, yeah. I can't wait. I mean, I'm actually, I've no, you know, got, mate. Enjoy now because it's coming your way. And it ain't. Now. I am enjoying it before I'm going to get serious. <laughs> yeah, I gotta, <laughs> but but they're all saying, oh, you know, when it comes to sport, it's all about taking part and enjoying and all that kind of thing. And there's a bit of me. I, I it's said, bullshit. It's not about taking sport. When do it's I turn about taking part. It's about when, winning. When do I say rubbish? Rubbish. I used to play football, and my manager basically told me to go and calm down after a friendly match because I just basically tore strips. Of, I was captain, and all the and all the I basically tore strips off all the players because we lost a friendly, haven't been taking them up. Do you so know, the, the people which are the best oh, to to taking part, they're, they're the people which don't do any weird, weird winning. It's about winning. However, yeah. however, you do need to be able to lose gracefully. Of and course. You do need yeah, to be able to, but it's you, not, it's you, not about taking part. It's about winning. End absolutely. Full stop. Let's move on. Fully agree. Fully agree. You know, you, you can lose graciously in public and be pissed off in private. Oh, uh, I don't. Yeah, um, I've just seen actually that Michael Crease is uh, just tuning in. Evening, Creasy. He's, uh, he's his name scrolled by before. So, uh, Michael Crease, thank you for tuning in, mate. Very good to see you. He said, J uh, "Where is it? JP Hero. There it is. Yes, JP. Do you know Hero. what? Do you know what? I maybe Creasy can comment on. This. I, I'm not spreading this rumor. I just heard it. But apparently, he's having some hair transplants. Is that is that right?" Are you, Chrissy, are you having some implants on your body? We're going to keep an eye on the comment section, see if there's any comment. <laughs> He's a lovely lad, but we he do. shouldn't have implants. No, no. He, he looks good. It suits him. It suits I mean, he's had some here just to give him a bit of definition. I don't agree with them either, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to keep an eye on the comment section. On, see if question, question, question. Anyway, so, um, yeah, I mean, you've, you've gone to the car team, you won the championship. And before anyone and asks... That is Clean and Co. Because I don't drink at home anymore. I've stopped it. Oh, a good pal of mine, uh, Spencer Matt Matthews, has created a non-alcoholic range of drinks, and that's a gin, a Clean and Co. gin, and it's brilliant. That's you wouldn't know. It's just it's looks... it's zero alcohol, gin and tonic. Because there'll be there'll be some people that are going. Oh, you said you don't drink anymore. Well, there you go. Well, I, I don't at home. I mean, I do when there I go you. out, but not at home. Yeah. Oh, I've, Michael Chris has just responded. Um, he's been ha 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 ha, and then uh, something beginning with F, and then you. <laughs> he's, he's... Can't that. <laughs> Tell him I'll buy me I'll buy him a drink on Saturday night because it's it's the Toker Awards. There you go. And, and normally I don't go to those, but I'll, I do want to go. Smash it! There you go. go. So no comment from Creasy, but a beer's coming your way. Happy days, or drink whatever. Um, so yeah, um, you won the championship '89, Carter. When did you start? When did you start looking? No, well, I won the championship in 1982. Uh, Two. I should have won it in '81, but I got whacked off, and I mean, Dad still got the scars. Uh, 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 Clay Pit Pigeon. I got whacked off leading, and my exhaust. Well, you know, you know, like a two-stroke uh, carting exhaust, like a Vevey expansion chamber that came out the back of the manifold and literally got stopped near him because i got the i got the you know the the black and orange thing stopped and i stopped near him and he's waved me over because that you know back in those days when we we're juniors they were out there if you, if you got you know if you spot bun off they'd help you the bump start you off and literally i stopped he waved me over and he grabbed the hot exhaust he tried to put it back on and literally his hands stuck and he's still his hands are still scarred to this day bless him so we should have won there but anyway we won the, the british championships in 90 in 82 hmm. and uh i think it was second in i mean a lot of them but i could i should have won it in 
I'm going to say 85, but I was beaten by a brilliant driver who's no longer racing and should be because he was ace, a guy called Piers Honeyset, who, you know, I made a mistake and he generally he beat me and he was great. Um, I mean, I won lots of, you know, but anyway, karting was really successful. What won the junior international uh, thing in 1983 in Germany, uh, Schumacher's track, who we then went on to buy. Play, uh, Horam Kirpen, which is an amazing circuit. Uh, yeah, it's all on the ju Junior International International Cup there. I mean, lots lots of great times karting. Loved it. And and miss it now. And, and you know, and anytime it's on TV, which is rare, I can't stop watching it because it's brilliant. Brilliant. Love but that. it's too expensive yeah, now. I mean, it it's literally, is, it's fucking stupid now. You know, the money they're spending, it's just ridiculous. Well, I mean, there were some numbers being thrown around in a couple of previous chats, and it's just absolutely ridiculous. I mean, you can, you know, it, it, yeah. But it, you it, do it, learn your craft there. That's yeah. where you learn to race. Yeah, That's absolutely. where you learn the race craft. That's <clears> where <throat> you, you don't really learn how to drive a race car quickly there, but you learn how to race. And yeah. that just becomes imprinted in your system where you don't have to think about race craft. You just, you know, you feel it. And that's yeah. where, you know, Lewis... I mean, Lewis is extraordinary. Whether you, you know, whether you like him or not, and I, I do like. I think he's an amazing human being. Yeah, ditto. But you know, you know, just look back to his Formula Three and his Formula Two days. Fucking hell. well, he was what a racer, and yeah. that's where he learned his skills. Yeah. And there, and those are now imprinted, and they're 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 kind of uh, subconscious <clears throat> feels. And everyone who's done a, a lot of kart racing, been successful, that's where they're great. Uh, uh, racing yeah. yeah so yeah karting is brilliant really great and in fact actually this is a bit probably uh probably uh might upset some people but you know whilst we all look at Janetta juniors and watch it with fun and enjoy it it's too young it was, there's been a few incidents this year and recently Not like that, but that's that's you karting's think... job it's yeah it's karting's yeah. job yeah, but I do run to the fence where, when they're out there, but then it's too young, I, I believe, because I think that's what karting should do. Yeah, absolutely. It's like, anyway, yeah, forget it's, all that. it's the proving ground. Um, so yeah, I mean, you've got sort of stepped up to sort of Formula Renault thereafter, and Formula, you know, and how did that come about? Was it just like a natural sort of well, progression, having met people, or was it well? Here's, here's the thing. You know, most people of, of my kind of age went Formula Ford. And for, Formula Ford back in, you know, the, the late 80s, early 90s was where it was at. It was awesome. I remember. It was I fantastic. Went to and I can remember, in 89. It was, oh. Yeah, I can remember what was it. Incredible. Brilliant. However, Brilliant. where I was at karting, and I stopped karting in 87, yeah, you know, I was racing in Europe on really sticky tyres, lots of grip. Um, Slick tires. Uh, I just didn't. I didn't see the point. A because we didn't have loads of budget. I didn't see the point of going to Formula Ford, where, in terms of grip and racecraft, in terms of you know having grip to, to 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 race the way I was racing, to going back to sliding around. I didn't want to do that because I'd done that in my mind. Right. And it just so happened at that period of time, Formula Renault, Formula Renault started in 1989. I think Neil Ridderford won the championship, I think. Anyway, there was a big, there was a big launch um, at Williams when they were at, at Didcot, Did, underneath Did, the cooling towers. But yeah. prior to that... Just up the road, um, yeah. I stopped karting in, in 87. <clears throat> and and, and, and the, the gulf between karting and cars... Compared to today, it was nothing in terms of money, but there was no, uh, there was no um, like bursary programs or no young, right. you know, young driver programs. There was no Red Bull. There was none. This, not none of that. And I, I thought, Jesus Christ, what, what? Anyway, the 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 Win Winfield Racing School in France stuck out like a sore thumb because it had been so successful in. I mean, at that point, they had 27 of their former pupils went on to be F1 drivers. Wow. And we're not talking shit ones either. We're talking 
I mean, just just what one English guy, Damon Hill. We're talking Prost. We're mm. talking uh, Tombe, Arnu, and the list goes that. on. Wow. And there's more since. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, it wasn't really quite th that well known in the UK. I mean, it was mainly Europeans which went, went there. But anyway, a bit of research. I found out there was a was owned by a guy called Mike Knight and his brother Richard, and they were English guys. And and they obviously had a relationship with Renault, and that kind of chimed with me because we're in all oh, Formula Renault, Renault first year in the UK. Don't want to do, don't want to do Formula Ford. I want to do slicks and wings. So anyway, we started to pad around with that, and I enrolled in the, the course. And um, <laughs> annoyingly, um, I got to the final of the what's called the Pilot Elf competition, which is everyone that enrolls in that course at at they had, they had two uh, two venues, uh, Ma Manicor and Paul Ricard, yeah. and everyone that enrolls in those courses gets whittled down, whittled down, whittled down, and they have, I think, four or six people, I can't remember, in the final. Anyway, I got to the final, but prior to that, um, and this goes over quite a few weeks, if not months, um, and prior to that, uh, we'd started to speak to ran a UK and met some people there and decided that, do you know what, there's a deal here. We'd raise some money. And I can rem remember the conversation where, you know, it was like, you know, if, if you win this thing and you, and you, and JP, you're going to win this. If you, if you do, if you do as work well as you've done throughout the whole thing, you're going to win this. But if you do, and you're going to be a Pilot Elf driver, you're going to race in Formula Red Runner in France. You're going to come after, you're going to have to come and live over here. And do you know what? That just spooked me a bit. Bear in mind, I had a deal in the UK. Sure. And I don't, I'm not going to say I, I, um, you know, I, I didn't give my best. I did. But I didn't want it as right. much as I should have done because I had something else. Anyway, I ended up coming <clears throat> run up to Christoph T Tanso, who was, who was great. And do you know what? It's one of the biggest mistakes in my life, though. Because I think had had I had given it everything, I would have won, and Elf would have put me under their wing, and I would have got to F one. Right. Anyway, regardless of that, yeah, that's what attached me to Renault, and and that's why I wanted to do Formula Renault. So I did Formula Renault in 1990 because it was slicks and wings, and it was you know pretty embryonic. They'd done their first year where they had few <laughs> technical problems, they'd ironed them out, and 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 that's what I wanted to do. And you know that's where I met Tim Jackson. God bless him. Uh, who was a head of motorsport from for Renault UK? Who you know was so helpful throughout the, my whole of my career. I mean, the whole of my career. Uh, ironically, <laughs> that's where I met John Booth from Manor Motorsport, who I then went to drive for a year later. But I'd actually shunned John, not shunned him at that event, but we nearly did a deal, and and I wish I'd done it at the time. But anyway, we went off in a different direction. Because we we were promised the earth by a guy called Steve Holman, who was had the best Formula Three team at the time with Steve Robertson, and they had um, he was a good driver, wasn't he? Who's that? Um, who's that? Uh, building merchants, High Street building merchants, which were on F three cars. Juicen. Juicen. They ran the Juicen F three cars, and I'm thinking, hold on. And he was starting a Formula Renault team. Anyway, that all turned to shit. And, and as it turned out, before the end of the year, we were, we went to Manor and did the deal with Matt Manor. And then the the you know, and my first my first time in the in the Matt Manor car, I think it was on the podium. My second time in the Manor car, and there works Duckham's Van Diemen driver, who John was running. Manor were running the works Duckham's car. It was a guy called Paolo Karkaski, who was really quite sensational. Uh, I was leading the race at in the customer manor car at Knock Hill. Was leading until the last lap, and Paolo fired me, fired, fired me off, and uh, the hairpin. Funny enough, and do you know what? That changed everything because then Ralph Furman saw Ralph Furman was the, you know the guy is Van Diemen. He saw what happened. He went, "Well, that's not good." And then you know John, who we became really great friends with and uh, you know i owe a lot to john booth and, and mary his wife and a guy called pete slavinsky who was my number one mechanic for many years whilst i was there um that cha that changed everything because then i was now not not a 
not a uh, a guy over there who was paying. I was now a guy. We want him in the car. Right. And and then in ninety one, I was the, the works Duckham's Van Diemen driver in Formula Renault, and you know yeah. that that changed that changed so much. And so many yeah. great great times, great yeah. times. <clears throat> Just around that time, I mean, I've, was it the R? Was it the RF ninety one? Was it? It was one of yeah. the. I just remember that was the time I was getting into um, into Formula Ford and other things that weren't F1 and BTCC. And um, I just remember that car with the Duckham's livery on it. I just thought it just looked the nuts. It was yeah, just, yeah. A, I mean, it, it just looked brilliant. Was it as good to drive as it looked? It was amazing. I, I mean, literally amazing. I mean, so amazing. To hear that. <laughs> I mean, literally incredible. You know, I, I can remember in in at the end of 1990. I can remember, you know, we did the deal with, with, uh, and uh, you know, John, John Booth helped helped to make this cement this deal in place with 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 Duckums and with, in the Works Van Diemen, and John was running the Works Van Diemen. I can remember being at Stetterton, probably starting. We're now starting November, three days a week, right up until Christmas Eve, pounding around testing stuff. I'm like, wow, this is amazing. Right, new rear wing that is just built in the factory. Uh, new new side pods, new new front dampers. I'm like, wow, this is. And it was literally not. And I can remember. Well, I can remember, and I remember this from Cartim. It was so fucking cold. Obviously, I'm not going to complain. I can remember putting marigolds, oh, underneath my Nomex gloves, so my hands didn't get cold because I was out, wow. you were out there, and like you know, it, it was cold. It was like you know. Just before Christmas, pounding round, pounding round wow. all day long. I can remember, you know, I can remember this racing karting. You used to wear mar marigold gloves underneath your underneath your leather race gloves. The breeze getting in or the wind. Well, it? just to stop your hands getting damp and cold and all the rest of it. And it worked a treat. I can remember pounding round, and you know, God Almighty, I'm so grateful for that experience because not only did it allow me to, um, well, allow me to hone to hone my myself on someone else's tab right so it checked me yeah like, you know i was doing thousands of miles thousands of miles someone else was picking up the bill and yet, yeah and yet i could learn ooh, i could try stuff i i mean i could i could i could learn about myself and well, that was amazing i mean literally amazing and also we got to do some really cool stuff i mean i can remember testing in i remember going to harama in Spain, just outside Madrid. Love that circuit. Pounding around, pounding around, pounding around. Right, right come weeks over. Right, test over. Come on, let's go to Madrid. And I'm now with grown men, and I'm a, I'm a, I'm a young lad. Well, I'm not. I mean, yeah, I'm in my twenties, but we're out into Madrid. Happy Great days. life skills. Happy Great days. Life. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. I love it. I love oh, yeah, it. I can remember. I can remember. You know, living at John's John's place up, up just near the other side of the M1 from from she Sheffield, and um, with these two young young girls who were like super young at the time, and and like, I was put in, you know, I was like, right, you can sleep over there, and I was almost in the play in the playroom, and I can remember, you know, getting up in the middle of the night to go to the loo or whatever, and and, and standing on a fucking stickle bricks. <laughs> or Lego. I can, I, can, you know, I, can, I can remember all this. I can remember it. It's amazing. God, I haven't had stickle bricks for years. Yes, Why is that my biggest takeaway from that? Or on your foot. Or, or yeah. like rolling over in bed and you're on like this little Z bed. Um, yeah, you roll over onto some stickle bricks. It ain't nice. But I can remember that with such affection. So people think Lego's bad. I want to try standing I'll tell you what. I mean, John will. Kill me for saying this. I remember, I can remember. The, I mean, this is quite a few years later. This is we're now going to '95 when I, when I jumped in his former Renault car and did some European stuff. I can remember going to the the Red Lion, which is the local pub near them, with Pete, my number one mechanic, and John, and we're there. And we're the, I don't know. We went there. I don't know. A Friday afternoon. I don't. I forget. But we're there all day, and the next thing the phone's ringing, and. Um, it's Mary. Like we'd obviously meant to be back there for dinner, and we've missed that. And she's ringing to find out where we are. And uh, and John's going, "Oh look, Mary's on the phone." <laughs> <laughs> Pass it to me, and I'm like, oh, "We'll be back soon." And anyway, we got we got back late, and Mary attacked, tried to attack me and John with an iron. 
As you do. <laughs> yes, I do. What goes with a knife? Not, not, not. Well, actually, no, quite aggressively, actually. But we all kind of like, oh, you know, we were talking about, you know, racing and all that stuff. But it was just great days. And I really? still speak to them. I still speak to them now. I love them to bits. Oh, wow. That's lovely. That's, that's <laughs> oh, great. Anyway, go back to Formula Right Runner. Formula Right Runner was great. I learned a lot. It wasn't as, as successful as it should have been. Um, you know, 91 was me in the works car against a bloke who, you know, we've not gone for many, many years, but we do now actually in Goodwood historic racing has brought us together. And we actually, you know, he only lives around the corner from me now. I mean, we got kids at the same school a guy called Bobby Verdon Rowe and he drove for Fortec and they were well-funded. He drove very well. I was in the works car and we were like proper, proper. Anyway, uh, we, we would do, you know, we, uh, and, and somehow I don't know why or the, how this happened, but scholar, who were mate who were doing the works engines and they were also doing their their engines too but we had the better engine being the works team they sent the wrong engine they sent in my engine and they pulled it apart and they found they found something because bear in mind the formula Renault engine at that point was a wet sump engine wet wet sump dry sump was banned and uh, because it was originally a turbocharged engine in the road car but it was normally aspirated in the race car. In the turbocharged, in the road car, they had what was called Pissette sprays. And these are sprays in, in, the, in underneath which spray the underside of the piston to cool them. Right. And what that did was, because it was a wet sump, it just frothed <laughs> up all the oil. And, and you, you know, with, with the G, we were pulling, they had lots of engine problems. So for, purely for reliability, Scholar had worked out that actually... In the regs, it said, uh, you know, some uh, engine oil baffling was free. So they they put a, a little ball bearing and blocked up the Pissette spray so it wouldn't froth the oil up. Anyway, his team found it, um, put a protest in, and it all got shitty. But we were literally nickel and dime, and the protest fucked it up. But the interesting thing was we <coughs> got really, really a bit aggressive that year. I mean, we're literally like, like mental to over the top. Bit and the reason much. being was back in those days, there was a particular type of insurance you could, you could, you could go and buy with a specialist broker called prize indemnity insurance. Right. And basically what, so here we are me and he did the same. We'd go to insure and go, look, if we win the championship this year, we need to go to formula three. And the budget to go to Formula 3 is quarter of a million quid. And where we are now, that's, a, that's an increase of like, well, because I was on a works deal, that's like an increase of a quarter of a million quid. So by winning the championship, we're now a financial loss. So you insure against that. Right. Quite perverse, but weird. Yeah, so yeah. if I win, insurance pays out to cover my losses to go to the next step. Well, right. guess what? We both had insurance. We both had prize and indemnity insurance. <coughs> so you both I've done a, I've done a pre-deal with Paul Stewart Racing, which are the best F3 team. So, look, if I win this, I'm in. If I win, am I in? Yes, you're in. All taken care of. So it got really – and he had the same thing. Right. So we weren't just fighting for a championship win. We were fighting for the next year's budget. Anyway, cut a long story short, the insurance companies went skint. <laughs> and none of us. <laughs> Got anything <laughs> other than a bit of a lawsuit? When we got, we scrambled a bit. I got nothing because I didn't win because they protested and engine was deemed illegal. And he he won, uh, but the insurance company went skin and he got a penny in the pound or something stupid. Wow. Um, so yeah, that that was Formula Red Reno. I mean, brilliant brilliant times. And do you know what? That was the kind of uh, that was when that was, that was the stone. Which got in the way of the snowball. Right. Me, my mum, my dad, and Tim Jackson and John Booth had started to get gathering. It just went and it, it just lost momentum because we didn't have the money to go to Paul Stewart Racing. And then, right. you know, we couldn't take that next step. We couldn't, we, we, you know, we, 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 we couldn't. But <laughs> ironically, um, you know, when the music nearly stopped, uh, it would have been.
uh, late 91. Uh, no, would it be late 91? Yeah, late 91. Uh, I was working at Silverson Racing School, uh, you know, to, to uh, like during the day. So I didn't have to have a proper job. So I could still be there and keep my eye to the ground. Yeah. <laughs> and I can remember. Um, so I, I had a couple of opportunities. One was to go off and do Vauxhall Lotus, which I didn't really have the budget for. And the other one was to go and uh, to go to Fortec in F3, which I didn't really have the budget for. Nowhere near the budget for. Well, the only one was to, was to go to stay with Van Diemen in their works Duckham's car, and they were producing their first ever carbon carbon car and their first ever F3 car, which was jointly done by a guy called Rolly Vincini, who was uh, ran a race team called P1, which was associated with Lotus, and they designed this F3 car, and it looked mega. Anyway, it soon became apparent that there was only me and one other um, that were going after the Van Diemen drive. It was me and Kelvin Bird, who right. was a pal. But I knew that Kelvin had, he, he might have had a bit more than me, or he might have had a bit less than me in terms of brass. But we had fucking fuck all. I mean, literally nothing. Right. Scraping it. And there was only two seats left. There was a there was a seat at, at um, a Fortec in a Reynard. And neither of us, in my mind, we didn't have anywhere near the money. I mean, nowhere near. Yeah. So anyway, I decided, knowing Ralph, uh, because I'd driven from, uh, with him and John in in Formula Renault, I, I literally arrived at his, at his door. I forget which. It was probably November, something like that. At his house at five in the morning. Banging on the door. Bang on the door. Next thing, Angie, his wife, came to him. Goes, what, what are you doing? So I said, I've got to speak to Ralph. I've got to speak. Get him down here. Fuck, it's five o'clock, JP. Get him down here now. <coughs> Ralph next down. And I, I badgered him. I want the deal. 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 And he gave me, we, we, sh we shook hands there and then. He said, Well, how much money you got? I'll find it. I'll fucking find it. Anyway, it happened. I had the deal. Well, that pushed, unbeknown to me, which in hindsight was the wrong thing to do, it pushed Calvin towards towards Fortec. They didn't have a driver. They supported him. That was a much better deal anyway. Um, it just never worked out. And that was that was the end of my single-seater career. Wow. Because I didn't have the money to make it work. And we got halfway through the year and Ralph went, where's the money? And we went, about that. I, I told lies about that. I haven't got, got it. Well, fuck me. You make your house 150 grand. I'll find it. But I haven't got any more. Well, that just pays for what you've done. Okay. Right. I'm out. And then they they, they, they they got rid of me halfway through the year. I mean, we eventually paid them back, but yeah, Jeez, it, didn't, wow. it, didn't, it didn't work. But you've got, you know, you've got to have a go. And ironically, yeah. I can remember racing against Kelvin that year and doing well. I mean, at one point at Thruxton early on in the year, mate, I was challenging for the lead at yeah. the, the race in 92 at Thruxton. Right. Yeah, I was, you know, literally. <laughs> Side pass, Gilles de Fran. Fucking, I was like, wow. And as as it got a bit more sorted, wow. It we just, just we, you know, just we didn't have the experience. I wasn't good enough at that point, um, and it just all went to shit because I didn't have the money. Yeah. But that can, money you know, talks, isn't it? I thought so many guys, but at least you know I had a go. Yeah. But you know, funny thing is, had I, had I not bang on his door at five in the morning. Calvin probably would have got the drive because he had a bit more cash than me, which then I could have probably got into the Forte car, which then meant I would have probably, I would have been in the top three of the championship, which then meant I might have got a test with Jordan, like Calvin yeah. did, and who knows, but he knows, yeah. that film, Sliding Doors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was he in that film? Yeah, yeah. Who knows? It could but, have been. It could have been. Interesting. Yeah, but I, you know, I love my single seater careers. You know, my, my time in single in single seater loved it. Smashing. Um, <laughs> great comment from Oliver Taylor. It says, like, "Never mind, Formula One wouldn't have been able to cope with Jason." <laughs> That's a good. <laughs> That's a good. Your, line. your sound has gone awful. Oh, has it? Shall I sit forward? Backwards? No, it's gone really crackly. 
Oh, okay. I don't know why that is. I'm going to have a quick play with some sound things. Why not? No, that's all fine. That's all. No, that is a good question. Mason seven eight nine says. Um, oh yeah. I mean, there's quite a lot of people who don't who don't probably don't know this, but what does JP remember fondly about his cousin Keith O'Dor? Yeah. Uh, yeah, lots of really fond stuff actually about Keith. Uh, yeah, my, my my dad's sister is is Keith's mum, or, or yeah, what was Keith's mum? Um, uh, so Jan Speed, Jan O'Dor, Keith O'Dor was his son. Jan's wife um, was, was, you know, is my, my dad's sister. So motor racing was was kind of, kind of there in the family a bit, a little bit. But I lived in Newcastle. They lived in Salisbury. We got together at Christmas. But actually, as things started to develop and my single seated career kind of stalled a little bit, I got a call from Keith. Uh, and we spoke a little bit during my single seat career, and he was trying to get into touring cars. I'm, anyway, it happened. They got the works Nissan deal. It was him and a guy called... His, his teammate was... Eric van der Poel. Oh, yeah. Anyway, Eric was going to be out of contract at the end of, I think... Either 04, 05, 05, at the end of 05. And I, I, Keith said, look, do you want to come and do some testing for us? We need some development testing. So I, I literally lived at, I remember going down to Pembrey in my fucking snackered Sierra, which, you know, you turned it on and anyone who is mechanically minded would run over and go, fucking turn that off. That's broken. You know, all the tappets and the... <laughs> anyway, it got, me, it got me to lots of places. Anyway, while, while whilst the lads were, you know, checking all, all the all the valves and the tappets and all the rest of it, I was out yeah. testing the works N N Nissan. It was going really well, and it looked like it was going to culminate in a drive with me in the Nissan, and then Nissan pulled out. But um, yeah, I mean, I can remember being four years old down in in uh, in sort of Salisbury with with Jan and Keith and Sarah's sister. And my auntie Anne, I can remember all that. Yeah, but we, you know, we weren't we weren't super close, but but we were but we were close. But yeah, yeah. Wow, I had no idea. I'm, I'm... Sounds gone. Sounds gone. Terrific. Okay, hang on. Ah, <sighs> how about now? Can anyone else hear me? Can't hear a thing. Can you hear me? Thumbs up. Can you hear me? Right. You need to do what you did earlier. Reboot your side. Because yeah, I can't hear a thing. Ah, right. Uh, I can't hear you. I can't hear anything. Okay. Hang on. Okay. People are saying they can hear me fine. I'm just going to give it a refresh. Can't uh, hear anything. With me. Mate, do the reboot. I can't hear you, so I can't hear what you're saying. Is that any good? I can hear you now. Who knows? Apparently, the sound was fine the whole. Uh, the sound was fine. The fine. The sound of fine. Yeah, the sound was fine the whole time for those living in, uh, listening in. So I don't know what the deal is. Anyway, we're all good. We're back. But I mean, obviously, Keith, you know, very sad loss um, with what happened uh, out in Germany. Yeah, you know, just like unlucky, unlucky guy. Yeah, yeah. If he'd. And, and, and you know what? And you know what? I, I'll mention this because it's really important. This. Mm. Um. You know, Keith died at Avus. Uh, yes. And, uh, and, a, and a real legend um, and, a, and a really brilliant, brilliant driver was unlucky enough to be caught up in that me melee who plowed in the side of Keith, a guy called, I'm sure a few people will, will know his name, called Frank Beeler. Yeah. And he shot into it. And literally it was one of those things where <laughs> it kicked off, smoke, smoke. Frank was going, where do I go? Keith there, wallop. Yeah. Unavoidable. However, yeah. I was very critical this year. Of, it was an incident where um, Dan Lloyd and Turkington had big shunts at Alton Park oh. this year. 
Alton, yeah, yeah. And I was really critical of this, and I still am critical because actually there's a char- there's a, a character or characters have not learned the lesson, and that there isn't. There's a rule, an unwritten rule, an agreement between all of us, and that is, do you know what? Touring cars is really aggressive, yeah, and 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 it's flat out. But when cars are sideways across the track and there's smoke, we automatically stop racing. We just think about the people ahead yeah. because T bones kill people. Yeah, and there was an individual early on in the year. Who didn't and and literally drove like a twat, and and I get that because he was just thinking, hold on, I can get some places here. Uh, anyway, I think it's important to note this because he wasn't called out, and I, I'm not going to call out his name. Yeah, sure. And I think he understands the lesson, but there are times when actually, amongst all the aggressiveness of touring cars, we have to be respectful for each, for each yeah. other because you know, you, you know you're going to hurt yourself. And Dan and Colin were really lucky that people yeah. didn't pl- plow into him. And that, you know, it wasn't that Frank or the people in Germany were just being crazy. There was just so much smoke, no one saw what was going on. And Keith yeah. was just dead unlucky. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, there's a, a similar thing with, um, you know, your old mate, Matt Neal, I mean, with Jake Hill, wasn't it, at Alton Park and turn around. Oh, Mark, yeah, and Jake, no, because, of his, because of his young age, didn't quite... Just- you kept, yeah, yeah, and and the um, the void between their opinions was enormous, enormous. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Jay, Jay gets it now, I know he does, yeah, I know he yeah. does, yeah. And you know, obviously, obviously, you know, Matt, you know, luckily, you know, no one hit him and he got out. And but as you say, it's one of those things where you think, well, I nearly t- 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 took him out with a judo chopper at um, a rock, rock, rocking him out. And he said, No, another word, I was gonna, <laughs> obviously, <laughs> obviously yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we all saw it. <laughs> um, but yeah, <laughs> we're going to come to that shortly. Um, but yeah, just what I mean, I mean, you said about the, you know, the single seater sort of venture it ended. Your next death was the Renault Spider, wasn't it? Renault Spider Championship. Um, and there was the carrot at the end of it, wasn't it? It was the, uh, the Williams thing. Um, did you just, was, was that why you decided to go down the Spider? Route. Well, do you know what? Again, you know, I, I, I'm thankful to uh, to Tim Jackson from Renault, God bless him, and a guy called John Millett, um, who helped me. Actually, prior to that, I mentioned about 2005 when I walked back with Manor and did some European Formula Renault races. I was working at Silverstone Race School. My, my single seat career had gone pear shaped. Uh, and I decided to give it, you know, we, and we were told, uh, we, we were all told, do not approach corporate clients at, at Silverstone or Brands Hatch or wherever. Do not approach corporate clients for sponsorship. There are, there are clients, they're there for the day out. Well, of course, what do we do? We're on them all the time. And anyway, I, I struck up a relationship with a, with a lovely bloke from Swan National Leasing. I managed to get them uh, initially in uh, midway through 95 to try and help me rekindle my single seater uh, career. Uh, anyway, I did, I did a few races in Europe with, with, with Matt Manor, but actually it worked out really well for, for, for um, Swan National Lit Leasing. And, and we became quite close. And it wasn't just the, the race stuff. I was doing lots of activity away from the racetrack with, you know, Turn their golf days, turn their you know stuff at, at their at, at their head office, yada yada yada. Anyway, I get a call at the end of that. Get a call. And I'm still thinking, right, Formula Renault, Formula Renault, Formula Three. How can we get this going? And I get a call from Tim Jackson. He said, "Mate, we're launching this. You had a Renault Spider." I went, "No." Told me what it was. He said, we're, we're, "We're launching one make series next year." And I went, "Stop, mate. One make. Pfft, I'm not interested." And they went, "No, no, no. You need to be." And I pushed and pushed. I went, "No, no, no," because Literally, from where in my mind, from where I was, there's nothing to gain. You know, if I do in my mind, if I do Renault Spiders, everyone will go and, and win. Everyone will go what he should do. But if I don't win, that's that's the end of me. Right. And actually, the end of me bit was more powerful as a as a deterrent because of where I'd been over the last couple of years. And I pushed to get. I said, no, 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 I can't. And then he said, okay, look. 
the winner gets a test at, in the Williams Tour, Tour and Car. And, and but bear in mind, at that time, I was doing some testing for for, for Nissan. Yeah. And what's more is Will, Will Hoy, God bless him, um, his contract is up for renewal at the end of 96, which is the end of the squad year, and it won't be renewed. So there is a hole. So there's a gap. And um, we really think you should do it. Literally within mi minutes, I did, I did the deal. Right, right. Uh so, so there was a, there was a, there was a goal. There was a there was a target. Uh, anyway, as it turned out, it was a brilliant year. I think we won nearly every race but one. Yeah. Um, even and and that was the first year I'd been involved in most sport where they reversed. Yeah, you know, if you put it on pole, they went. I oh, start twelfth and still right. won those races. Wow. Anyway, won the championship. Did the test with so so actually. And and that was with a, 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 um, a beautiful team called Mardi Gras Motorsport, who were based at Salsen. And actually, the guy who owns that, who owned the team back then, a guy called Martin Sharp, is no longer with, with, with us. I owe him a, a great deal of gratitude and thanks for because he gave me such brilliant equipment and he bought into the whole what we were trying to do. So yeah, the Renault Spiders was an amazing thing, but honestly, like they were the scariest, nastiest things in the world to drive. Right. Oh, they were horrible. Really horrible. I can remember getting in the car at Thruxton and literally coming back in like two or three laps later, eyes popping out my forehead. Like, what the fuck is this? What wow. can we do? No, I can't do anything, really. <laughs> <laughs> what do do? What's worse? What about this? Hmm. No better. What about this? Oh, that's worse. Wow. Go back. Oh, that's like it was at the start. It's still scaring me. That's all we got. But it was like wow. that for everyone. And it was really, it was it, it was great actually because they were very difficult to drive. Larry, tricky, would bite you if you made a mistake. And it was great. It was really great fun. But I could see there was some progression. Yeah. And you sure. know, I got busy during the year, uh, was always up in the commentary box, or running around all the race teams, like going to meet the, Re the the Renault team and just being busy, being a bit annoying, yeah. probably. But they knew who That's I was. Big, don't you? You have to be something. Yeah, got to, got to. And you know, I got the test did really well. And um you know, <clears> the test at Willie's at Silverstone. I did a did a really you know I say so myself, did a really epic job. Yeah. Like like epic, like really epic. Proper. And there's one thing which my second run in the car, it left the pits, got down to and it was on the international circuit at Silverstone. Mm. Got down through Beckett's maggots, turned into the bit where you come down to the little funny little chicane. I'm like, ooh, that feels a bit weird. Bear in mind, it's the first time I've driven a front-wheel drive car other than the testing I did with Nissan. Yes. But fortunately enough, the testing I did with Nissan, I had loads of drive shaft failures. And guess what? So you I kind sensed, of knew it was. I sensed, I sensed there was a drive shaft failure imminent. So I turn the car off. Imagine it's your chance. I'm like on the pits. I'm turning off. I've got a drive shaft back to go. And they're like, no, no, it'll be fine. I'm like, no, no, it's going to go. It's going to go. Stopped. Wow. They came out, came back, took the part. I went, fucking hell. It's a, you've set, you've set, you've saved the gearbox. You've saved the bell arms and you've saved lots. And literally I'm like, it was like, and, and you could see the atmosphere in the team change. Anyway, the fix it put me out there, and it was a different environment from that moment on. Right, so anyway, did a great job. Was convinced, like, here we go. This is looking good. Went down to see Frank and Patrick. Was had the interview. <coughs> that went well. Left there, thought it's coming my way. Who else can they get? Anyway, I get a phone call from Frank's. Uh, PA called Nicola, who was the scariest, scariest lady in the world. I've heard she's a scary woman from a few things I've seen. Yeah, yeah not not because she, only because she was powerful, but scary yeah, yeah, and, and blunt and straight to the point. Just uh, Frank would like to see you. Uh, can you come down tomorrow, at whatever clock? Yeah, be there early. Thinking come this is it. I know, but Frank got me in there to look at me in the eyes and said, "Look, you've done a great job. I'm ever so sorry, but there is no drive, and the reason I'm." I've, got you down here is because actually i need to t tell you actually 
there's nothing you don't feel like you've you've come up short there's nothing you could have done because actually you haven't got the right profile for us um runner on your side but do you know what we need someone with profile so we're going to either go with right. jean christophe Br- brilliant or morbid Deli. sorry but really appreciate it. it's great you're on our books you're in our mind but just not now uh, not so i'm yeah. fucking yeah. absolutely destroyed I bet you were. Yeah. I mean, because, yeah. Yeah. And I literally thought I was going down there to sign a deal. (laughs) Sorry? I thought I was going down there to sign a deal. Yeah. Well, I suppose as as you would. You know know what? It's one of the best things ever because a week later I woke up full of hell, or two weeks later, and and that's what made me charge down there to doorstop him. Yeah, the doorstop. (laughs) We we, 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 we heard that story. It's just amazing. Because, I mean, didn't, didn't you go in there? You you went in there and the uh, you know the like lady you mentioned she just said right you can't rock it or get out or was it someone else and you were basically told to no, get no, out and get in the car it was Nicola yeah was I mean you know because because I you know two weeks before I obviously I was arriving there to go for a meet with Frank my name was on with, 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 with the security guard hi yeah Jason I'm like, hi hi what's your name did all the right stuff charmed all the girls on reception so of course when I go back there next time unannounced. I know the people on the gate. Well, what are you if I'm just here to sit and see Frank? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, in you yeah, come, JP. Yeah. Get the reception. I'm here to see Frank. Okay, Jay, how are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sit down there. I'm sat there for 15 minutes. And then scary Nicola comes down and says, what are you doing? Uh, I'm here to see Frank. Mm-hmm. Well, I've got, yeah, I've got an appointment. Yeah, I know, but just want five minutes. And literally, she was like that. But she she let out a gem of information, either on purpose, which I think she did on purpose, or it was accidental, but I think she let out on purpose. She went, you're wasting your time. He's, he's not here tonight. He's not here today. He's not here now. And I knew he had an apartment upstairs, so he sleeps there most of the time. He's not here. He arrives at lunchtime. And that gave me an out to go. <sighs> right. I went, look, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please let me know I've come. I just go and wait in the car park. So I went and got my car and moved my car underneath the tree and sat there for three hours. Jeez, wow. Just waiting yeah. for him to turn up. Yeah, and door stopped him. And the day that changed my life. Yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, again, I've seen it elsewhere. You basically just you saw him coming in and you went barreling across the car park and. Right after the car, yeah, yeah. And all of a sudden he was there. <laughs> yeah, and he, and he parked right in front of you, didn't he? Because you thought he was off around the back. Oh, yeah, yeah. You... Right after the car, I'm like, oh, fuck. Oh God! And I'm looking in the car, thinking, "Oh shit!" I'm at the passenger door. Oh, they've got to get him out. Forgot all about that. Of course, yeah, as, yeah. As Hamish, who was his 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 aide, his nurse, who you know we're, we're still friends to this day, actually. And I'd met him a few weeks earlier. As he got out the driver's side, I'm now looking at Frank. Fuck! <laughs> Hamish gets out, and I, I looked across the top of the roof, and Hamish had this look on his face as if to say. It's all right. We know we know you're here. And that put me at ease. And I'm like, right. Anyway, it's still awkward after they got him out of the car and I'm like stood there. And like, yeah. imagine they get him in the chair. And I'm like, as soon as he's in the chair, and I know he sat down, I'm like, I'm on him. Frank, sorry. Just, can I just have five minutes of your time? Yeah. No, no, Jason, you can't. And it went on. And they're trying to Hamish is trying to wheel him in the door, and I'm blocking his path. Oh god. <laughs> I, honest to God. Anyway, wow. For short, that, yeah, that's what happened. He gave me five minutes, and he kept me waiting out. I oh, t- yeah. told you. Do you know the story about the lift? Oh, I, I think I was it. You were. <laughs> it was a, a compromising position, but oh, to, the, to the to the untrained eye, was it that one? Oh um, man, yeah. Next to reception, there's this little <laughs> tiny lift, which is only for Frank and his nurse, and it's the size of a wheelchair plus one bloke. Right. Anyway, in, all right, I'll give you five minutes in. And they've wheeled him into the lift, reversed him in, and Hamish. And I've I've gone to get in. I've gone, mm, there's not enough room for me there. And I've sort of kind of like stopped. And Frank's gone, are you fucking getting in? <laughs> so I get in. And now, and now, it's so tight. I'm stood up. My, my <laughs> like Frank's knees are there. And Frank's head's there. <laughs> there, there, and he's not looking up at me, he's just looking at me here. Right. And I'm looking at Hamish eye to eye, and Hamish is literally struggling to contain. Sorry, not to laugh. But I'm shitting myself, thinking 
this is just weird. Anyway, we get out of the lift, we go down the, the uh, top floor to his office, and he said, uh, Amy said, yeah, I'll just wait, wait, wait there, Frank. And 45 minutes he kept me outside his office. Wow. At which point, Nicola came out, glared at me. He glared at me. You're still here. Yeah, literally she didn't say it, just glared at me. <laughs> anyway, God. Day, that changed my life. Wow, well, and obviously, you know, and he set the test up, didn't he, with you know, with you and the two other guys and yeah, I mean, after that, I got I got a phone call within a week, and he said, uh, "From Frank, he said, okay, there's a test at Saturday next, next whenever, next Tuesday. It's you, Bouillon and Morbid Dirt Deli. Same engineer, same amount of tires, fastest man gets the job." And obviously, you went far. I mean, were, were you confident going into it? Were you thinking, "I can, yeah. I can have yeah, these"? No, guys. no, I still thought. Still I still in. thought I'll give it my best shot. Wow! And then yeah. obviously. Yeah, you, know, you got the drive, and all of a sudden yeah, you're yeah. a DT. Yeah, and, and you know what? We, we, we were very, we were close ever since that day. Ever since that day. Wow, that's brilliant. I, that's I have brilliant. him, and, Pat, and I still, I see, I, I see Patrick three, four times a year now. We spend a bit of time together. It's an amazing period of. Um, and you know what? That's brilliant. That's brilliant. And you know what? You know, uh, it's it's. You know that that's a story I'm really proud of. Not not because not because of anything other than it was great and it changed my life. But it's actually a story which which I hope that young kids, uh, it doesn't matter what they're involved in, whether it be you know golf or tennis or this that the other. But but particularly my motorsport. That if you want it badly enough, if you want it badly enough, you can and, and you can now. somehow. Um, so, so somehow show your determination and your uh, and your passion to those that matter yeah do you know what you can make it happen and yeah. and, and and that's what i'm proud of it's not you know it was great for me but actually as a as a as an inspiration mm, as a message yeah uh, yeah just you know if you if you want it bad badly enough then yeah. then you can make it happen and you find that those people who you do it to, I suppose, probably respect you for it. And they'll think, you know what? You know, half half the battle is having the heart to do it, isn't it? And and I think that, that obviously you know, shows yeah, yeah. in that. Type. But, yeah, so then all of a sudden you're, you know, BTCC driver in the car um, at the time with probably, you know, the driver in the other one. Um, obviously, you know, with the Laguna and with Alan well, Menu, I mean, wow. Well, Alan. Alan was the finest touring car driver in the world at that point. Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. So, I, mean, I, mean, know, I remember me. in F3, yeah. I think, and thinking he was brilliant, mainly because I because I knew his surname. It was Menu, Menu 7, that's quite funny. Um, but obviously, he was the man in the car, and you're his teammate, and... Oh, it's a perfect, on. perfect scenario for me. You know, best yeah. team, best car, best teammate. Yeah. And that was, what, and then obviously the first round going. That, you know, <laughs> and it was great. It was great. And I learned, you know, I mean, our relationship, mine and, and Alan's relationship, what, what wasn't great, I must say. <laughs> no. um, okay. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't bad, but it wasn't great. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I, I learned a lot from that guy. He, he you know, I, you know, I, I owe him a lot, actually. I mean, not not that he wanted me to learn from him, but he he was really quite amazing in the car. Yeah. I mean, really, um, I mean, if he, at the top of his game, he was oh, really really special. Yeah, top. Oh, top. I mean, from the outside looking in, you know, you just think he is bloody good. You know, um, oh, he, he was re really world class. World, world, world class. Yeah, world class. exceptional, exceptional. Uh, oh, Gary Jones, the. Uh, the wet seat episode. That sounds intriguing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that's a few years later, that is. Yeah, we'll come to that, surely. Um, but yeah, but I, yeah, the first round, I mean, you stuck it on pole. Um, first time out and got, got a podium and all that. I mean, did you, going into it, did you have any expectations on it, of it, of the car or in yourself or in that first weekend? Because it went pretty, pretty well, didn't it? Oh, it's amazing. I tell you what I'd like to do now. Can, can Obviously, you being the pro you are, you can throw it to a break so I can go and have a quick piss. You can do that. I, I can vamp. 
You, you talk right. to him because I need, I need a wee wee. I'll be back okay. in a minute. No worries, you can. That's fine. Yeah, wee break. We all need a wee break. Yes, we've, so yeah, I mean, this is superb, isn't it? What an absolute gent and a legend Jason is. Thank you so much for everyone for tuning in. Um, loads of you tuning in. Little tip bit here. There's actually more people watching this one than watched Mario Andretti uh, live on the Hard Compound. So that's very, very cool. Thank you very much, everyone, for, for coming in and tuning in. Um, and when we're finished here, go and watch the Mario one. That's pretty good. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously, we're going to touch on the BTCC stuff very, very soon. I appreciate we've already been here for an hour and a half, but uh, it's still going to, uh, you know, I do hope you aren't going to go anywhere because this is absolutely brilliant. I'm not going anywhere. All right. Well, JP has, but it's fine. Um, but uh, just to mark your cards, if you're a fan of bike racing at all, um, Wednesday, we have a live chat next week with um, uh, with a world champion uh, of the two-wheeled world. And I'm very much looking forward to it. I'm not going to tell you who it is, but we're announcing at eight o'clock tomorrow night. So do tune in for that. And we've also got interviews all the way through to the 14th of December. We've got another BTCC uh, driver synonymous with the RS 500, which is very interesting. Um, we've got a former Brit Superbike champion coming on, hopefully a current Brit Superbike champion coming on. Uh, we've got a former IndyCar and NASCAR driver coming on. It's all very exciting. And we have got a legend of the touring car world. So it's all very good, all good stuff coming. Um, so give us a follow. Don't miss out on all this good stuff. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, again, thank you very much for everyone. You see, there's lots of talk about poo. Poo breaks um, <laughs> in the comment section. Interesting. We're going to come to that um, a bit um, later on. Um, I have seen all of your questions and we are going to try and work them in. We're just going to rattle through the BTCC stuff. We're going to throw some stories in and then we're going to have some fun questions towards the end. So um, that's all going to be very good. Uh, I'm just going to quick have a scan through. I hope he hasn't got a microphone in the loo with him. Oh, goodness me. Yes. I'd like the scene in an airplane. Yeah, we don't really want that. No, I think it's okay. We're fine. Um, yes, uh, Diffan. Yes, this Q&A is going to be a long one, but I don't care because Jason's a legend. Plenty of stories to tell. Absolutely. Sorry about that. And he is back. We, uh, we are back. Uh, some um, Somebody was saying that uh, we're hoping that you haven't got a microphone in the loo. <laughs> uh, no, but do you know what? I have done that fit filming before. Wow. Got, gone off with a, like a, a transmitter the... pack on. Yeah. Yeah, and, and what's more is I've... I've witnessed with, you know, friendly sound men where one of our contributors or guests have gone off with a, a wireless pack on <laughs> and we've all listened in. Oh, goodness. Anyway, back to Menu. Um, yes. Yeah, he was, he literally, he was really quite, quite special. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in my mind from that kind of time, it was him and Ivan Muller were the two uh, that sort of stood out in my mind at the time. Really? Yeah, I thought oh, Ivan was in car days. Sorry? Really? Oh, I, I, no, I just not, 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 not in that era. Not, not no, in, maybe a, in, a bit further down the line, but just thinking back of the BTCC and World Touring Cars and all that kind of thing. And just in touring cars in general, it's always those two that come to mind. Oh, yeah, really, that's interesting. Not. That's interesting. Ivan definitely, it, it definitely, definitely. Uh, Rydell definitely. Yeah, uh, Ricard Rydell. He's, he's definitely. the guy who you would not, I spoke with Alan Hyde last week about this. He said, of all the people, if you were to look at someone and say, who is a touring car or who is a racing car driver, Ricard Rydell would not be <laughs> that guy. Because he's a... Oh, you know, what he's a, physically mean? Yeah, well, just to look at him just, and, the, and the way he talks and stuff. He just yeah, he, well, he's, a flower, he's a flower salesman, isn't he? Yeah, he's a flower florist accountant type guy because yeah, yeah. he came on I for a chat. And... <sighs> Could he ever had really tasty? Yeah, yeah. Um, but no, he was great. Um, but anyway, yes. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah. That first weekend, I mean, you know, you'd gone rather well, and um, I thought, just... yeah, your question was at what and point you your first... did I ever think? Yeah. Well, interesting enough, uh, I did. I I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I wasn't thinking about first race, but um, Williams um, gave me such a brilliant opportunity and did the job really beyond my wildest expectations at the end of yeah you know, preseason testing for '97. And I can remember being, I can remember my first proper test where you know I had my car. I mean, I can remember going to the factory and they were building the chassis and 
we, we're now getting into, you know, the, the then, you know, my engineer, a guy called Jerry Hughes, who, who was amazing. Um, you know, being on the, the, you know, in the factory, which was like nearly 50 people there. I mean, it was bonkers, full, full-time stuff. I mean, drawing office. I mean, it's just amazing. And they said, right, um, you know, and I, I was there every day, busy. What, you know, what? And then then they said, all right, we're getting into ergo fit. I'm like, what the fuck is that? Well, ergonomics. So, you know, get in the car. Well, I've not had a seat fit yet. Yeah, but just imagine, where do you want stuff? I went, well, like what? He said, well, yeah, but what, where, where, where do you want? Well, the gear lever. I said, well, just fucking put it there. I'll have well, it there. Yeah. Have a, no, no, no. Where do you want it? I went. Well, I don't know. Well, yeah, but do you, do you want it? Do you want it coming? Do you want it coming at you? Do you want it coming away from you? Where do you want it? Oh, where, where, where do you want your anti roll bar adjuster? Do you want? Do you want? Do you want? Uh, do you want turn dials? Do you want levers? What do you want? I went. Fuck! I don't know. I like just I don't know. <laughs> and literally, it was literally like that. So obviously, when when you know my, my first car. Arrived and we had a mule car where we we shared some. <clears throat> but Alan did the majority of it, quite rightly so. But we went to Harama and I had my own car, which was chassis two, um, which I had two cars for ninety seven. I had a spare car as well, spare chassis. It was bonkers. And we get there and we, you know, we sat down on the. I think we went by private jet as well. I mean, literally just really, what the fuck? Anyway, I can remember sat down with Jerry Hughes, my engineer. And this, this is our first proper, um, me and him with our crew working together, got our program, we sat down. And he, had, he, he literally had a run plan like that over the days. And it was like, okay, what we need to do, JP, is we're going to, basically we're going to you do short runs and, you need to understand exactly what the diff does. That's a really powerful thing. And but the diffs back in those days were quite complex. Not only did we have, you know, like a clutch ramp diff now, but we had a, a VC, a viscous, a viscous coupling. So if you imagine all the different settings, like there's loads of them. They said, right, we're gonna, you're gonna go out and do three lap run in, change the diff. Three lap run in, change the diff. So great to build my toolbox up. Okay, we're gonna do. Once we've done that, we're gonna do. Uh, yeah, Ride heights, front and rear. Then we're going to do roll bars, anti-roll bars. Then we're going to do springs. Then we're going to do uh, roll centers. Then we're going to do everything. I'm like, wow. And this went on for five days. I didn't do any more than three laps on a set of tires. In, three laps, new tires. In, three laps, new wow. tires. In, three laps, new tires. Right, change car. New tires, new tires, new tires. I emptied. I had a whole articulated lorry of Michelin tires just for me. Wow. And I ran no more than three laps on a set of new tyres. Wow. And you know what? That initial learning, and that was all about me building a picture of what what did what. You know, they were setting up my toolbox. You know, wow. okay, you've got that, you've got that, you've got that. Work with your engineer so he can understand your language. And we literally just fucking tried stuff for a week. And I built such a brilliant understanding of the car. That whenever we went testing post that build out the season, but I was on the ball, like wow. so on the ball. But I was so on the ball for new boots. When they put new boot boots on, I knew where the grip was, and that really helped me. So of course, when I went to to Donington, I knew I'd be on the pace, right? Um, yeah, but I didn't. I didn't I had that I didn't confidence. Honestly, expect to come in and you know the last lap going through qualifying, seeing P one on the board. I didn't expect that. I, I, I kind of expected P, P4, P3, P2. But I didn't expect P1. P1. A nice surprise, though. I mean, what an introduction to, you know, to the series. Right. And, and it wasn't just P1 for race one. There was two qualifying sessions. You had a second qualifying session for P2, uh, for race two. Guess what? Fucking P1 for that. Time again. And then we get to Silverstone. Fucking P1 for that. Time again. Yeah. And you know what? Jeez. That whole process forget silverson but just that first weekend he got me out of the shop window because you know what it's like over here everyone was dying for me to fuck up and <laughs> guess what i shouldn't really have had that drive really you know i got the best driving touring cars yeah, uh, straight into uh, it, yeah. and as a rookie and i really shouldn't have had that and and guess yeah. what that got me out of the shop window and everyone in the paddock went 
Fair dues. Yeah, fair but, enough. But there was a sting in the tail. Because not only was that good for me, it was bad for me. Because literally, I was on the, I was up on my heels, on my toes, like fuck it now. Yeah, and I got a bit carried away myself. If I'm really honest. Right. Right. And then yeah. Alan came back like that, and I'm like, oh fucking, and I couldn't. And then he started to turn the screw up, and he was just quicker. And I yeah. started to overdrive a bit, tried to push a bit hard, made mistakes. But fortunately, because I'd had that little lift, that bought me some time. To, yeah. to collaborate myself and to sort myself out, yeah, and then and then it all started to come good. And it, yeah, but yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. Not long after that, I was literally probably being a bit of a prick, actually, <laughs> like, on, on in my own head. Yeah, you know, yeah. not pushing hard enough. Yeah, I've got this sussed. Yeah, didn't really. It was like complacency to a degree, I suppose. Just a well, little I bit. Just of, enjoying the good. You know, it was the first time. Yeah. I, you know, I was I was writing invoices and big and big checks were coming. <clears throat> So you get carried away. Yeah, of course. Uh, of course yeah. But fortunately, I had enough good people around me. And I'd come from a, it really meant a lot. that It didn't take long for me to work out, Jesus Christ, mate, yeah. he's really good. He's turned the wick up and I couldn't match him. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But again, yeah. He's and that's all great learning, isn't it? Quite a good guy to learn from. I was just going to say, yeah, he was the, yeah, he's the best player. But, you know, he, he, you know that that year, just it kind of all came together. You got the first win at Snetterton. Um, uh, that that must have felt good. I bet. Were you were you back up on your toes again after? <laughs> yeah, it did. It did. It did feel good. I felt. I felt. I was ready to win earlier, and um, and I was. I wasn't. I had to play the game, which I was more than happy to do. So, I mean, I could have won at Alton Park, but you know. It, at that point, it was all about getting, you know, helping Alan as best I could, and he deserved it, and and and, he, and I deserved to be helping him. You know, I I wasn't a team leader, but you know what? Yeah, it was it was a good moment. That it was a great moment, a really great moment. Was it obviously you know enjoyment, of course, but was it like a relief? I've always I always ask people this. I mean, you know, I asked it to you know like Mario and Gretti and things like that. You know, is it? Um, when you get your first win, is it a relief or is it, yeah, the first win? Yeah, yeah, do you know what it is? Yeah, it is with that amount of pressure on you. Yeah, yeah. Like obviously, with what had gone on before and you know, getting well, not so much that, but you know, I'm I'm in the yeah. best team in the world, and uh, yeah, you know, my, my, my teammates doing a lot of winning, and okay, I'm you know, I'm getting the odd podium here and there, and I'm crashing a bit, uh, I'm getting involved in scuffles, so yeah, it was, uh, but I know the raw pace is there, but I just couldn't quite piece it all together yeah. so yeah it was in, important and i must say after that i got that first win even though consciously i wasn't driving any differently my, my driving was better after that right right and and actually it was it, i found it easier uh easy is not the right word but i found it uh that you know the lap time and the pace was just was just came i didn't have to yeah. And it it's is, constantly I was making less mistakes. And I must say, you know, going into the last week, weekend, I was at the top of my game. You know, I was, I was on, well, you know, I was driving really well, relaxed, using no energy. You know, was uh, lots yeah. of time to think in the car for lots of stuff. So, yeah. Uh, but, you know, that, that was almost like a, <sighs> just took a it's bit terrible. of pressure off. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, just release the valve a bit. Yeah, and um, you know, the same could be said. You know, I guess if you were to sit, you know, if, if <clears> you know, if if Ingram or Ash Sutton or Hill or any of them were sat here now, and you talk about their first win and how yeah. they performed afterwards, so I think they'd all say, "Oh, do you know what? It just, you know, everyone says the monkey off your back." Yeah, it doesn't I, the truth. That it just, oh, it just allows you to just be le a bit less tight. Yeah. Yeah. I, I said exactly that to Jake. He came on last year. Um, and obviously I, I was at Knockhill for his first win in the Audi, which what wasn't a front running car, reverse grid did well, and he drove brilliantly. Yeah, win, the win. Yeah. And he said that he just thought, oh, I've done it. I mean, we yeah, you know, we saw the reaction of Simon, his dad, he went nuts. Um, but he said, I've done it, I've earned it, you know, because he's kept supposedly faster cars behind him. Even with the ballast, and he said, "I've done it in this car." 
I can do this. I can, mm. you know, and obviously he's got into a top car and he's done rather well. Um, it, but it just, you know, here is the thing. Do you remember what I was saying about when, you know, I've got, did my pole and me was on, up on my toes a bit too much, like yeah. strutting around. Do you remember what happened to, to, to Jake shortly after that, the following year? The bit got involved, a bit busy. Do you not think? Oh, with um, yeah, in the uh, the Civic with he's Mark, got a bit. yeah, and now yeah. He's, he's a better driver having that, gone yeah, through that. that. Was, it, it, that happens for every, it happens for everybody, it? and you know, yeah. Jake's incredibly talented. Yeah, very Top. fast. Yeah, yeah, very very fast. Okay. And honestly, and I, I'm good mates with his dad, Simon. I, I love him to bits. We go back a he's long, crazy. long way. And I've, I've said, said this to him. Jake, Jake should, should have won the championship this year by by well, by, by, by a fucking mile. But and I'm not I'm not going to I'm not going to reveal it all because that's not fair. But he knows and he knows why. And I tell you what, next year I was going to say different he's my different pick. Different he's, he, he's going to be if he yeah. still has that same package and it's still all the equilibrium stays the same. Yeah. He could. <laughs> I mean, I had a feeling going into Browns, I thought he could do it. And then obviously Ingram took par one. I thought, well, that's probably that. But Jake, yeah, Jake's top, yeah. top, top, top. His time will come. His time will come. He's a Absolutely. special lad. Yeah. Cham champion in the making for sure. Um, this, I think it was 97. Do correct me if I'm wrong. The Bernie Eccleston incident. Um, <laughs> you almost <laughs> mowed him down. Is that correct? Yeah, on the, on, right on the King's Road. Yeah, was it because he? Yeah, um, I read you were twiddling the radio. And almost I was off. I was off in oh, the whole of '97. Obviously, you know, trying to you know be to do as work as hard. You know, what what one? Here's a bit of psychology, and 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 anyone that's been in a in a in a professional environment where two guys are getting paid, and one's the underdog, the new guy, and one's the professional. Yeah. Uh, from my perspective, I looked at everything, and you know, in, in the car, uh, he he was just better than I was, uh, and it was something I needed to learn and improve, and that will come, and I knew that would come. But actually, there was areas outside, uh, and you know, to be a great driver who is. Um, uh, valuable to a manufacturer, you, you need the whole package. And some people are good at this, some people are good at that, some some people are good at this. Anyway, I looked at everything. I thought, well, where, where, where's where's Alan Week? Where where can I shine? You know, where, where where can I turn my light on? And it just I don't force it; it just burns a bit brighter. And it was the PR stuff. It was because I was new boy in town, wanted to do everything. So I I would sign up to everything. Oh yeah, I'll do that. I'll do that. Well, it's a, it's a Sunday, all day Sunday. Mate, love to. So I was like, <laughs> I was in, I was doing an event in London on the Saturday in <clears throat> something, I forget what it was, a meet and greet or I, I don't know what. And then I had to, and then I had to go out of London to go somewhere else on the Sunday morning and I had to be there up, up, up early. <laughs> I had to get down there for like nine o'clock. It's like an hour drive or what, or eight o'clock. I don't know, but it was early. Anyway, I'm charging out of London in me in me in me uh, British Racing Green Renault Laguna, three liter V6, thinking I'm mint. Yeah, you know, tin kit on. Right off we go, and and I'm tuning the radio or something. I was definitely doing something with the stereo, and I've looked up and there's a there's a a zebra crossing and the lights are i have to stop and there's a little short bloke on the crossing and i've gone <laughs> stop and i just literally stopped i mean a meter away right. a meter and a half but had i had i had i look had i stayed down for another half a second i would have taken that it was bernie eccleston wow and he was off too. And one of his favourite things he does, which I've now subsequently learned, was he, go, he used to go down to uh, all the ant the antiquity markets down Kings Road. Right. There's a really famous one down there. He was off to the antiquity market. Is that open? Yada, yada, yada. But I can remember him looking at me going, as I'm, but now I'm like, but I'm now in my in team kit. 
And I'm thinking, oh, fucking hell, please. I'm not, I, you know, I don't know the bloke, but anyway, I got you away with it. Yeah. Nothing was done. But could you imagine? Can you imagine if I'd not looked up and just take them out at 30 mile an hour? But could you imagine how motorsport would have changed from 97 <laughs> onwards? Could you imagine? You, you could have been the biggest, single biggest catalyst for world motorsport. You could Anyway, thank, thank God, thank God I didn't take him out. Yes, I very course. nearly did, yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, goodness. Wow. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, I mean, just moving on, quickly on to the next year. I mean, it, you know, um, it, I always thought it looked like a, like a nearly season, 98. It was like close. Uh, but, you know, Volvo... Oh, in all honesty, we didn't, we didn't quite, you know, uh, Volvo produced a brilliant car. Yeah, yeah. You know, that was, that was really the best car in 97. We didn't have the best car in 98. We didn't have the best car in 99. It was still a great car, don't get me wrong. But, um, you know, uh, we, we did okay. And in all honesty, um, me and Alan did all right. I think he was fourth. I was fifth in the championship. Yeah. I think I won maybe one or two races. He won three or something. Yeah. I, I, I can't remember. But we didn't – we just weren't – Ricard was – he was on it. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. He he was on it. And now he had the package which we had the yeah. year before. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just say that Nescafe car. Well, it's one of the favorite cars of BTC fans ever. The green. Really? The green. See, that's interesting that. Yeah, I've actually seen it. I've I done a few posts. The car looked better. See, yeah, yeah, the yellow and blue. I I loved it, yeah. yeah. I always like that. Yeah, that was one of my favorite. But the green one, people seem to. Yeah, I keep. I think I put a post out on your birthday and you know, before your final weekend, and put, all the comments were about were about the Nescafe car, the green one. Um, but yeah, that one. That's the one. Yeah, that's the one that people seem to be loving. What that's versus cool. is that one? Yeah, see, I would go for that one. That's the one, surely. Yeah, that's the one I would pick. But what? Yeah, you know what this one is. I always thought, what do I know, guys? In the comments, which one do you prefer, yellow and blue? Do you know what that blue. one is? What's that one? Oh, that is that. Oh, that's you and. Hang on, I can't see it. It's a bit blurry. Is that the work? Oh, I've glued them down. It's got some tape on it. That's right. No worries. I can't quite see what's that. Is that the work? Is that the Euro? Oh, see that. Every... See, hang on. Everyone's voting for green. That's oh, a no. Bathurst car. Oh, there we go. It's just zoomed in. Yeah, that's it. Bathurst 1097. Yeah, yeah. Me, me and um, Menu went to do the the Bathurst when it, when it turned to Super Touring in for 97. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. I'll tell you what, this is, uh, this is dividing opinion. It's got yellow and green. Sorry, yellow and green. You've got yellow and blue. Yellow and blue. The green was a bit plain. Yellow and blue. Green. Oh, can't split it. My goodness. Um... Yellow and blue. See, ah, oh, yellow and blue's winning it. Know, who green. gives a who who gives a fuck what color it is? If it's fast, it's great. It's a bloody good car, isn't it? You know what it what I, mean? I loved it, but I'm I am with you on the yellow and blue, and I'm not just saying that. Um, but uh, yeah, but then switch to um, uh, Vauxhall Triple R and all that. Um, what was I thinking behind the move? Was it? Did you think that's that's the car to be in? Basically, was it the? No. Um... I, you know, three quarters of the way through uh, 99, I was called in, uh, at, well, we both were, both me and B Bouillon. Uh, I, was, I was team leader in 99 and B Bouillon, who's a lovely bloke, funny as you like. We were called in to see Frank and Frank, and Frank basically said, look, uh, it's all changing. We're out. We're out at the end of the year. It's all stopping. Right. You know, Williams Touring Car Engineering is closing its doors. So, um, early heads up, you might want to get yourself okay. another drive somewhere, which no, was no, a great right. thing to do. So, um, anyway, we, we knew two, three months before anyone else did, before the paddock knew. And literally, I got a uh, I got a phone call from from Derek Warwick, who who was literally trying to effectively poach me from Willie's. Oh right. right. And I that didn't let it was all going all going pear shaped. Um uh, so we did a deal. We did a deal. If you come out if you, if you come out of Thruxton and you get on the A303, you turn left, and you go down the A30 uh, the A34 and you turn right, 
down to south. A yeah. mile down there, this Sutton Sutton, Sutton Scotney. Sutton Scotney Services. We did a deal in the in the services there. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I used to turn off at Sutton Scotney to go to work every day. I had no idea that's where you'd work. Right, we did our deal. We sat, we sat. I can't remember it was a little chef or we maybe she sat in the big thing. I can't remember. We sat there and we hammered out a deal and we shook hands. And I walked wow. away with a deal there and then yeah. Oh, yeah. that's brilliant. That's very yeah. cool. And it was announced before the last race of the year. Yeah. Which was at Silverstone. Uh because uh, Clellan was retiring. Um, yes. So I jumped in the Clellan so yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's very cool. Yeah. I, I, um, do, do you know what? I love it. He's not. I, I, he's, I, he's not around now. But Barry Hinchcliffe, he used to do the mm. production for the uh, for tour, touring cars with Steve Ryder was part of. He was a director of the company. And Barry interviewed me at the end of race three at Silverstone, and it was the, kind of the sign off, like you know, it was the end of an era. Da -da -da -da. And I, I had, I was fighting back, you know, tears in my eyes. And Barry was behind the camera, not up, not up in the camera, but interview me and he's going like let them come out and i'm now fighting them off and i never forget that and he pulled me afterwards he said fuck why don't you let them out i went uh because i felt like i had to keep them in he went no 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 that was another lesson learned wow yeah wow yeah. so yeah it was a really sad day actually really sad day because some oh, really yeah. brilliant people at, at willies who at that moment just went and split up and went and it's a different direction. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I, 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 you know, I'm, well, actually just not far down the road from Williams, same as you. And, and they were like my team, obviously, Nigel Mounts when I was a kid, and I'm a big Williams fan. And I was a bit, I was a bit upset just as a fan watching. I thought, oh, no, you want Williams in. Um, but, you know, you've gone to, um, sorry, you've gone to, uh, yeah, you've, got, you've gone to Vauxhall and alongside uh, Ivan Muller, Vincent Rademacher. And now Dick Bennett's actually said something. He said, he uh, thinks that Vincent Rademacher was a hugely underrated driver. Um, and I, I always thought he was very good. Um, I, I would, I would, I would agree with Dick. Actually. He was yeah. actually re really great. Really, really yeah. great. I mean, I, I it's actually a bit soft, a bit gentle. Yeah. Terms of, of BTCC, but you know, really fast, technically very good. Um, you know, um, precise, consistent, mm. Uh, yeah, he was great, he, yeah, great, great, but just was prone to be beaten up a bit, yeah, yeah, kept his elbows in, <laughs> yeah, um, or that... not knowing when people have their elbows out. You know, sometimes you have to go, Ooh, and sometimes you have to go, fuck. and he, yeah. he was just a bit, a bit soft, a bit too ge genteel, yeah, no, but, but well, that was... incredibly but, talented, yeah, without it, it, it did. It did surprise me because I had Dick on here and I asked him, you know, apart from the obvious Ayrton and Mick and all that, who were the other drivers who he really rated? And he went, even before I finished asking, he said Vincent Radamac. Um, which is, yeah, without a doubt. Which I thought was without pretty cool. Um, he, he, was, he was good. Yeah, he was good. But um, yeah, I mean, like that year, um, you know, you took a, you know, was it fourth and first at Brands and, you know, but obviously the Mondeos were strong and everything. But um, what, 2000. 2000 yeah um and he said yeah i was watching something the other day and you had a bit of a nudge with ivan at old hall at uh alton park and apparently he wasn't very happy with it there's a bit of carnage at the first corner apparently you tagged him and he wasn't very happy but that's what i was just watching some old highlights and that happened um but yeah i mean you took um was it fifth overall i mean what was your thoughts on that year was that you know was was it again was it where where you thought you'd be that year well, do you know what 2000 was a tricky year actually uh it was a, it was a tricky year because um you know i um i, I was uh, i mean i was i was aware i was aware of the contract that Ivan had and i knew that i had to yeah you know, i knew i knew what i signed i knew what what two-year contract i signed and i signed a, i signed a first year Ivan's team leader He's got that in his contract. Um, yeah. If needed be, uh, I would assist. Right. Yeah. Uh, and quite, and, you know, fine. I've signed up for that. But in, 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 in the way that was pitched and the way it always is 
the way it is, is that means at the end of the year, towards the end of the year, one of the one of the team drivers will be ahead or behind. And if 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 a van is ahead, then of course, of course, I'll do my best. Yeah. But what it it to my mind, what it didn't mean was we arrived at event two, which is Thruxton, and I'm I'm now leading the championship. Mm. I mean, I'm leading the championship, and I'm and I'm pissing the race, and Evan second. What it doesn't mean at that point is the radio cracks open and said, "Pull over and let Evan win." And literally, I'm like, "I'm sorry, no, no." And I argued and argued and argued for three or four laps, and uh, but nevertheless, I know, I know, you know, a, contra- a deal's a contract's a contract. Uh, so I said, "Okay, I'll yeah, okay." Yeah. Wow. That's too early. And they see. kept on saying, when? I said, in my time. In my time. So going into the last lap, I, you know, I eased right off, put my indicator on the start, fit, finish straight, and made it known to the world what, what, what I was doing. Because I thought it was, I thought that was wrong, really wrong. Well, at that, that stage, time of year, well, do you know what? That didn't do me any fair favours. Did me favours with Vauxhall, because they were appalled what went on. But it didn't do me favours with with one of the with the main director of the team who had done the deal with the van, um, and and then it just was just awful. I mean, awful. Yeah, there was the coded messages, and I mean, it's just fucking awful, awful. But as it turned out, um, you know, we 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 finished on the road where we should have done fourth and fifth. Should I been fourth? Should he been fifth? Who gives a shit? Yeah, you know I mean? it makes no odds, but but there was no need to set up that angst. Yeah, and it yeah. became it became it hadn't started to do that yet, but, but it, was, it started to just yeah. And, and you know what? Uh, parts of the management, not not Ian Harrison, not not um, Derek Warwick, but but um, the other part of the ownership. Everyone was coming down a lot of flack from Vauxhall. And because I was the English bloke, because I was PR friendly, they're like, well, why are you doing that to him? Well, and I, I milked that. I used would. that, which, which yes. set up division. So consequently, when when um, <clears throat> I managed to get the contract changed uh, for going into the – or I managed to get the contract – Clarified, really clarified, um, with the help of Vauxhall because I put pressure on them. That that didn't go down very well. So, so two thousand and one. Um, I mean, it was it was a shit fest. It was it was awful, awful. But looking back, I learned a lot from that. I learned, I learned yeah, yeah, a tremendous amount of politi- you know how politics work. Yeah. Um, and. Uh, I mean, it was just all, all, it was awful, really, really yeah. unsavory. You and you know what? Being you, you know, I, I, um, you know, me, me, me and Matt Neal have had a load of aggro over the years. Really? Uh, <laughs> yeah. But you know what? I can, I can literally sit down with Matt and then we can, we can have a beer and we can speak openly and honestly. And actually, it's all gone. So it's, it's all gone. It's all gone because we were just competitive, overly competitive. It was me and him. We were on the TV every weekend, and uh, we were pulling every stroke we possibly could to get underneath each other to get the upper hand. It, it was competition, and it was it was and it overboiled sometimes. But actually, we're what we're, we're we're genuine enough and honest enough to go. Do you know what? I was a bit. Yeah. I, I did wrong there. Oh, well, you know what? I did wrong there. But I can't have that conversation with it with a van, right? He's the only person that really. He's still. No, I'll say it to his face because because I I I don't like liars, and and what he did at, at Silverstone when he ran out of petrol, when he had fuel surge, and I, I was going to come to that incident. Yeah, I clapped him because he ran out of petrol, and and I yeah. have the data. I know that, but he pretended. That wasn't the case, and refused to shake my hand, and and this went on for months afterwards. And I'm I thought like, that was poor form. The, that, the that's just shit. Do you know what? However, what I will say is, as a driver, oh my god, is that is oh. he good? He's brilliant. Yeah, brilliant car control, great racer. You know, mm. hard, soft, 
has everything, but he's a human being, he's a twat. He's, he's just a <laughs> Well, I, yeah, you've never met the guy. There comes a point when you look, you look at someone who, who, you know, I respect him and I demand respect back. You look at someone and go, do you know what? Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't do that. So yeah, the only, enough, the only person that I still to this day I can't, I can't, I can't. I what you can't have the chat with him. You can't. I'm not interested. He's a no. liar, and I don't do liars. Fair enough. Fair enough. But yeah. a brilliant driver, brilliant oh, driver. Yeah, and obviously he's still going now. You know, in well, well, just yeah. he's still with Cyan Racing. Yeah. So uh, yes, but um, yeah, but anyway, two thousand and one, it ended pretty well. Um, you know, it was. Uh, I mean, I was in that wet race at Brands Hatch. Maybe two things. Yeah. <laughs> that. That's the good night. Um, but yeah. Um, that wet race at Brands, the season finale. Oh man, it was um, stressful. That. I was just, I mean, just watching it was mental. I mean, watching it, I go, what the hell? I mean, it even was with... I, had, I had a team of lawyers. The other side of AAA had a team of lawyers. They were trying to get me thrown out. It was hideous. It was horrible. So the Jeez. stress was, which was amongst us, was unbelievable. Oh, unbelievable. And do you know what? I made a mistake on that. Uh, 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 kidney, whatever it's called, hit the hit the river across the road, spun. Ivan Ivan did three times on that, but didn't go off where I did. He understood through the thing and you know yeah. screwed his car up. But yeah, it was it was that was a relief. But yeah. but actually, it was great to give me mum and dad a hug. But the the atmosphere in the garage. I mean, literally, there was a garage, but there was a like. It may as well be in a brick wall between both sides. It was really? horrible. Is that really bad? Horrible, yeah. Apart from uh, of the of the, the you know the three directors of Triple Eight, Ian Harrison, who to this day we're still great mates, and he was really honourable and great. Likewise for Derek Warwick, and then and then Roland Dane, the other guy who was not in, in my camp. Um. Oh, it was it was awful. Anyway, I, I won the championship and got the sack because the van had I'd signed a two year deal and he had one year to go and I just went I can't work with him can't I can't work in this environment. Wow! So, so, anyway, it was, it was, you, so there was like the relief and the joy of winning the championship. Yeah, it was weird though. It was weird. Yeah, I won the championship and I'm a, I'm a, without a drive. It was weird. Really like stuck on one hand, feeling crap yeah. on the other. Yeah. Um. God, terrible. Um. So you sort of stepped away from the. Oh, I should have just seen um, Oliver Taylor. He uh, is a bit of a mad scientist when it comes to motorsport. He cuts up cars and makes key rings and break disc tables and stuff like that. And he's just said so many. Oh, I do. I'll take that because that, that 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 to me is a lovely compliment. Yeah, he said so many t-shirt ideas coming from this chat. And someone said, "I'll take one of Jason saying Ivan was a." <clears throat> Oh, there you go. It's some business. Oh, right there. There you go. Mason seven eight nine. That's it. Was the Biff with the violet uh, pedal around the Silson? That's what I wonder about. That is that is the running out of fuel moment. Yeah, that's the one because it was it was it Luffield or whatever it was called that. That was uh, Priory in pri between Priory and Brooklands. That's it. Yeah, in front of the BRDC thing. Yeah. Yes. It oh, was God. neither non. It, 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 it was neither one purpose right? nor frustration. Hold on. Oh, that's a good book. Hold on. I've got one here, look. Hold on. Doing the plugging. It's in here somewhere, isn't it? I can't. I've got my own. I've got. I've got my own copy here, but I'll. Uh... Those are the data traces. Yes, that's it. I knew I'd. Say... Yes. And it's got fuel pressure and the whole shaboogle. It's got so whole... get, get that book, and it tells everything. And I've got it on my screen as well. Yes, excellent book. But yes, all, all true. Um, yes, read it in your book. Epic driver, but no integrity. There you go. That's what a few people said. Um, what was that? What's that? Uh, Malcolm. Malcolm. Epic Bates driver, but no of... integrity. Who, who's he on about? Evan. Uh, I, I, I assume so. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Assume so. Um, no. So yeah, it was a strange end. Uh, but he took a sort of step away from BTCC to get into the ASCAR NASCAR thing. Yeah. Um, 
I love a bit of NASCAR. What winds me up the most <laughs> is people that say it's just going around in circles. Same with IndyCar, because it's not. And it really, you know. Um, I've read something or heard something that you had a chat with Dale Earnhardt about. I did, something. yeah. And you said, oh, you want to get into it. And he had a retort, didn't he? He came oh, back. Amazing, something about, amazing. Was it this I've is gone, over, I've gone over there. I wanted to get into NASCAR. And um, I love NASCAR. I just signed up with a with I need I need because up till that point I didn't have a ma manager because uh, I you know I knew everyone in the UK I did it myself and I, I still <laughs> haven't got to this day haven't had a ma ma manager but anyway when, when I went to the states to try and break in over there um I appointed Julian Jacoby who was Senna's ma manager who run a company called Stella Stella Mat ma Management who looked after Richard Burns who was a great pal of mine. And I said, look, can you help me get to the States? Uh, and, you know, we did a deal, that, you know, 30% of gross income, whatever, to the, just help me get there. So anyway, they pulled out all the stops. <laughs> anyway, off we went to the States. And uh, we went to we went to Charlotte. There was a big race at Charlotte. And yeah. I was being paraded around by, by Ju Julian's team. And they introduced me to, to a guy called Fred Wagonalls. And Fred Wagonalls owns a company called Action Performance. And Action Performance have all the merchandise deals for models, cups, T-shirts, guns, fishing rods, boats, whatever you want. I mean, I'm, I'm not taking the piss. That's all nice. those things and a whole lot more with all the drivers. So Fred is like, Fred's a big guy. And Fred said, look, Come, I'll show, show you around. Imagine you've got like a Charlotte, like a, imagine it's, it's an oval, but it's like got a bend in it. Imagine four corners of the oval. He said, like, come and have a look. Anyway, come, it was a Saturday, I think. It was qualifying day or something like that. You go out to each corner and every big driver's got these big Arctics fold down fronts, all their yeah. merchandise in there. And every night they go away, they get restocked, and sometimes they go away during the day and get restocked. Unbelievable. And I'm looking around and I'm like, what's that? And it was a Dale Earnhardt truck. I said, what, what's that? That's a gun. He said, yeah, yeah, you can, you can buy like a Smith & Wesson with Dale's signature down the barrel. I'm like, what? He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, what's that? And there was, a, there, was a, there was like a fishing boat. Oh, the I little... said, what, what's that? He said, yeah, you can buy a boat with Dale and fishing rods. So everything, I'm like, wow, fucking hell. That's unreal. It was just amazing, amazing. And anyway, we're, we're coming back and we're walking back into the paddock area. And the, if you've been, you've been in the States, you know what it's like. It's different to what we've got. They've got these, like this central area, like this penned off area, but it's not really penned off. And they're open garages. Everyone yeah. can see each other's team. And 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 I, Dale's walking towards us, going somewhere. And we're I'm with Fred. Dale hasn't got a fucking clue who I am, obviously, quite rightly. And Dale's there and his big black shades. Yeah. His yeah. good wrench, black thing on. He's walking up. And as he gets near, he's gone, hey, hey, Fred, how are you? Comes over having a chat with Fred. And I'm kind of just stood there. You know the situation. You've been in that before. It's like stood there like, and Fred goes, after a little while, goes, hey, hey, Dale, let me introduce you to to Jason Plato, he you know he's coming over here. He, he races uh, British touring cars in da, da. and Dale goes, hey yeah, you race those. Uh, I've seen you on that. You you race those little pity cars, yeah. I said yeah 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 uh, yeah kind of yeah. Oh, I do. Yeah. Uh, blah blah blah. <laughs> he said what well, you know you you over here on vacation. I said well uh, <clears throat> no not really. I, I'm looking because I want to come and do I want to come and race NASCAR. And literally the atmosphere changed. He stopped. <laughs> And he, he pulled down his glasses, limped forward. And he went, he said, boy, this ain't no place for puppies. This is where big dogs piss. <laughs> and literally, I buckled, and I'm howling with laughter, thinking <laughs> it's a gag. And I've looked up at him, and he's still like that. Going, I'm serious. He just stands up. He said, I'll catch you later. He fucks off. Wow. And you see it, but I tell you what, what a moment. Wow. What a moment. Jeez. What a moment. I would have died happy. He could have said anything yeah. to me. I would have died no happy. place for puppies. It's where big dogs piss. <laughs> it's where... What, a, what a great quote. What a line. That's yeah, brilliant. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, I was a puppy and next. I didn't get into NASCAR, but I, I so wanted to do it. Yeah. I, that's the next on my bucket list. I went to the Indy 500 this year, which is one of my bucket list items. Ah. Daytona 500. 
Oh, they call, it, they call it the greatest spectacle in motorsport. Insane, isn't it? And I thought, oh, yeah, whatever. That's America. Yeah. I went there. I, I went there for carb day on the Friday, race day on the Sunday. And from you get within half a mile of the speedway, you see it, your jaw hits the floor, and it, it doesn't come back up until you go back to your hotel. Yeah. Mate, I um, did it. I did it with three pals. We went oh, just because I've never experienced it. We went for the hundredth but running, and literally blew my mind. Blew my mind. Oh, it's just brilliant. I mean, although I had to think, I'm going to tell this very quickly. Um, I had Ari Lion Dyke on here, one of the first sort of big names I had yeah. on here. I love Ari, absolute hero of mine. And I kept in touch with him and said, "Look, we'll catch up when you come out here." So I met him. I, it's just the weirdest thing having a text message from Ari Lion Dyke saying, "I'll meet you um, outside the pagoda." I went, that's cool. That's a cool <laughs> swing shot. Right <laughs> like, so and, and he's there with his cap on and his shades, obviously keeping himself to himself. He's had, and I went, Ari. And he went, hey, Rich, how you doing, man? You right? You good? In his accent. I went, yeah, yeah, fine. He goes, oh, I had a quick chat with him, a little photo. And he said, what passes do you have? I went, oh, just general access passes. He goes, have these. Come with me. And he walks through. Yeah, no, brilliant. And the security guard sticks his arm out and says, Oh, stop. And he just gets his lanyard out. And he goes, Oh, I'm I'm so sorry, Ari. I'm so sorry. Really? And really? he goes, These guys are from England and they're coming with me. And he took us in back through the kitchen and, <laughs> and into the garage, took us into Renus VK's garage and all that, looked at the car, everything, absolutely amazing. And then he said, Look, I've got to go. Um, I was like, oh, thank you so much, Ari. It's been brilliant meeting, whatever. I looked down at my phone, I've got a missed call from Danny Sullivan. I was ah. like, what is going on with my life? <laughs> how 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 lovely is that, that Danny? The best. Yeah, he's but, a good pal of mine. He's lovely, isn't he? Oh, he's the best. But I phoned really him and said, oh, hey, Danny, I'm, I said, I'm so sorry that I missed your call. I was just catching up with Ari Leindyke. And in my head, I went, I just heard that. <laughs> what the hell? And I met up with Danny as well, which was just Danny amazing. Fine. It's very different over there, motorsport. It's very open. So open, yeah. yeah it's lovely, yeah. Um, but yeah, I bumped into, you know, few of the other drivers but yeah it's brilliant but um but yeah here's a yeah. funny story for you when we when we went to to indy with me and uh three pals <clears throat> we um we got an airbnb a, a, a nice one so we thought but it was a bit weird in the middle of uh downtown um uh indianapolis is it downtown Indianapolis, the Indianapolis, in, because we we were right by the big fountain thing, the big roundabouty fountain. Oh, okay. Royal thing. Well, we, we we were in like a like a suburb, well, okay. a nice suburb, but everyone was on or with flags on their porches when we got back okay. at night. But it was a bit weird. But anyway, I I I as we're going there, I booked um, four scooters right to get right. us to and from. <laughs> A scooter's different to in the UK as it is to America. You know what a scooter is in America? It's an invalid scooter. <laughs> so next thing we get we get back to IABB. There's fucking four like invalid scooters. Little dark red, yeah. The little ones with a basket on the front. I'm like, well, what are we gonna do with these? So I called the bloke up and I said, uh, mate, this is not right. He said, Well, I did think, what do you want them there for? I said, Well. What about we just wouldn't it be great if we drive them there? He said, You only get halfway, the battery will go. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I thought we we're getting like because I tried to hire Harleys, we couldn't hire those. So I thought, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, oh god, yeah, yeah, brilliant. Yeah. Oh my goodness, wow, yeah, only in America, it's just brilliant. It is brilliant, but I mean, go back, yeah, the, the Daytona is the next one I want to do. Um. I'm actually in discussion. I'm not going to say a name, but I'm actually uh, hopefully trying to get a uh, bit of a NASCAR legend on for a chat in the new year. But oh, mate, I'll, you've got to. I'll tell you off air if I can get it sorted. Well, do you know what? Do you know who we're speaking about at the moment? You know his son, Junior? Yeah. yeah. Do you want me to? Because I know I know Dale Jr. Oh, my God. That's he's lovely. Brilliant. He's great. Because he's top man with podcast and everything else. Oh, as well, isn't I, I'll have a chat with him. I'll oh, chat with him. I would love that. Oh, I'll, have chat. I'll have a chat. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Um, and anyway, I we've digressed. Obviously, you didn't do the NASCAR thing. You came back with um Sia and the uh and the driver training thing, and um just want to uh, you know not skip through the Sia thing, I'm just very cautious at the time. But um, well, Sia thing was quite quite was quite a pivotal moment, actually. Yeah. Um I was, out, I was out in the wilderness without a drive, tried the Ascar thing, signed a big deal with Rockingham, 
uh, they, they they decided they weren't going to pay, so we ended up in a court case. Anyway, it all, all ended up getting sorted out. But it, it, you know that was meant, meant to be a three year thing. First year Ascar, then get me to the states. Anyway, after they stopped paying the bills after six months, so I'm like, ooh. Anyway, uh, so so then then. Um, then I, I got some intel that say it were looking at it, and I know what they've done with rallying. Uh, and then I, I kind of like just bar barged in to say it and spoke to X person, then went X, X, and got to the, the main man and right. said, Look, I'll help you sort it. And 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 they they kind of went okay yeah yeah we'll do that I said look I really want to get back this is what happened to me top of my game <sighs> let me put it all together so I managed to make myself epi you know the epicenter of that deal not just from trying to steer it in the right direction but also on the marketing point from the marketing element and that and that was really really key to the next. 10 15 years the stuff i learned right. there so i had a brilliant time at say it um you know ch changed my life I'm, you know i met my wife um uh through through say it uh got you know got my career back going again in touring cars we came back with a bang did a brilliant job yeah, yeah. you know i helped steer the the initial first year deal to it was going to go <clears> over there and i went oh let's send it to rml that served me in good stead because um, a year or two, it then went to where Say It wanted it to go to, which is fine. Uh, but, you know, RML were always grateful what, for what I did. And they said, look, what, why don't you come and race with us in Europe with Chevrolet? And I went, do you know what? I'm not because I think this is going to be great here. Stay there. But actually, had I not steered it down the direction of RML and, and really like, oh, don't do that. Then 09 wouldn't have happened with me and RML, which then would have meant 2010 wouldn't have happened, 2011 wouldn't have happened. So actually, that whole period, it kind of from uh, four onwards, was really quite key. Yeah, quite key to the you know my, my my story actually, and actually my life. Yeah, it was. Well, it seems like everything kind of came together. That I'm just going to say that it's down to you that I had to see at Leon. Few years ago, because I thought oh, I love it. It was the Holiday Inn livery thing. I <laughs> I love that. Um, and um, well, yeah. you should have you should, you should have had a Cupra. Yeah, I, did. <laughs> I think I lost my job shortly so before you know, you know, the round lay, lay on the modern one, or do you have the the original one? The, the original one. The, one, oh, the, the original one. The 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 the, the Cupra was fantastic. What a great yeah. kit that was. Yeah. Um, and I do know one of the followers of the page, a guy called Thomas Parker, I believe his name is, he's a marshal, and he has done his see at Leon up in your yellow and green holiday in livery thing. Oh, I see a, it. He's a bright lad, obviously. I see, yeah, I see it parked at uh, various events when he does marshalling. And, uh, yeah, good lad. Right, um, Rich, I've just looked at my clock. It's fucking up past 10. No. Yeah. Is that past 10? It is. And I, Shit, yeah. Rich. Right, come on, 15 right. minutes. minutes. Yeah, I've got beautiful. Rattle through, rattle through, rattle and if you through. look at my face, you know I'll need loads of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, rattling through. I mean, I want to fast forward very quickly. This car here, absolutely brilliant. I love it. <laughs> um, that was actually sent to me anonymously. Don't know who um, Absolutely brilliant car, and it won you the championship. I guess you enjoyed that championship year a bit more than the first one. Oh, it was amazing! It was amazing. <laughs> I, yeah. yeah. Like well, it was amazing. Yeah, we were just you know uh, operating at a really high level. We had a brilliant relationship uh, with you know everyone at RML. Uh, you know, engineering. We we were just on 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 the button all the time. It was great. You know, yeah. Was it an easy year? Do you know what? Oh, yeah, it was. Kind of was actually. We were just a bit up the road from everyone else. But I must say, the year before oh nine, God, we nearly won that. Yeah, yeah, nearly won that. Yeah. And that was a brilliant year. I loved that year as well. So, yeah, th th those were good days with RML, really. And do you know what? Uh, yeah, me, <laughs> <laughs> amusingly enough, at the end of at the end of eleven, um, 
with Chevrolet and and an RML. Um, I remember we're building a car for me for 12 season onwards. And I can remember turning around to Ray and saying, and also to, um, you know, the main, the main people I was dealing with, but also to Ray and go, do you know what? It's not a done deal, mate, because actually uh, I want, I want, I want more than that. I want, I want more than you put on the table. You get now, you're not having any more. I went, okay, just so you know, just so you know, you're not the only man in town. You're not the only game in town. He went, yeah, whatever. And he generally thought there wasn't. Right. Anyway, jump forward a few weeks, probably six weeks or something. I'm under now enormous pressure from RML on their lawyers to sign the contract. And I'm pushing it away because I'm working on the MG thing with with um, AAA. And I put all of that together. Everything, right. Every nut and bolt. I bolted that together. Wow. And I'm pushing it away, thinking, I just need another week, another week to get it all sorted out. And I'm literally, I'm you know, coming up with all the excuses, fucking hell, this, that, and the other. Like, Send this over. Oh, it hasn't arrived. Oh, this, that, and the other. Oh, it's at my lawyers. Did, did, did. I'm pushing away. And meanwhile, I'm like on the meeting after meeting after meeting with MG, and it's complicated. I'm like, fucking, can we just do a deal? <laughs> anyway, it gets to the point where I've, I've got the feeling that it's going to happen. But I have to turn off RML. I can't, I, enough's enough. I've got to turn them down. I've got to turn them off. But, you know, in, and I can remember being in, in my in my office. I've got, I'm in my office here. I've got my computer there. I've got Heidi, my business partner over there. She's beaving away with her. And I'm like, fuck it, I've got, I've got, I've, look, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. And I'm fucking phone. And then I'm on, I'm, I'm literally, I've had this phone conversation with uh, uh, Ian Harrison and one of the directors of, of MG. And we've, there's heads of terms have gone backwards and forwards for like two or three days. And I'm now, I'm getting tired because they're now arguing over little tiny shitty little bits, but they're important. So I've literally, I've just, I've typed out, it's gone subject, MG, H, capital H, small O, capital T. Let's just fucking sign it. All the stuff. And it's gone to NRS or AAA, MG, big board of MG, their lawyers, all the rest of it. But one of their lawyers had the same Christian name as RML's lawyer. And it auto filled, and I went like that, and then I went, "Fuck!" <laughs> and I literally jumped, fucking ran around, and I'm pulling cables out the back of the computer to try and stop it going. <laughs> literally, and Heidi's like, "What the?" I said, "Fuck it, now, fuck, fuck!" I've, I've fucking blown everything up because the deal wasn't done, and Did I was you... still, I was still trying to keep RML on on the hook, but now I've blown it up, and I still haven't got to deal with. MG within three minutes, bloop, the phone's ringing. I'm fucking hell, it's MG. It's fucking hell, it's RML's lawyers. Fuck. And though that 24 hours was a really interesting 24 hours. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, the upshot was me and Ray fell wow. out over that big style. I mean, big style. But we're friends now because he understood. Mm. Yeah, we, we both understood each other. But at one point for 24 hours, I'd blown everything up. Everything. <clears throat> We're talking hundreds of thousands of pounds worth of income. Go on, fucking blown up. Blown wow. up. Wow. Anyway, it all worked out great in the end. God. But yeah, but literally, the the, 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 the the funny moment I've got is literally off my chair, running around, like pulling Cat 5 cables out of everything, trying Just to stop it going. Stop the string going. It went. It, went. I mean, it was uh, literally unbelievable. A literally <laughs> unbelievable. Wow. Uh, uh, Goodness uh, me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So those were great days, really great days. Yes. <laughs> so, I mean, just come, there's a lot of people talking about having a part two in a series of this. Crikey. I mean, I'll be well up for a part two at some point. Um, Do you know what? It's not a bad idea because, look. It's getting on a bit. I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll agree now because, literally, it's yeah, November. 
Let's do a part two. I'm well up for a part two. I think the new year, if that's all right. I'm, but um, just, I mean, because very quickly before we have to go tonight, we have to touch on Rockingham. Did you think Matt was going to lamp you one? Because it looked like he was about to. I know. I, I was. I was. I was goading him to lamp you one. Yeah, I thought you were. Kind of... No, I was goading him because I had my helmet on. <laughs> and it's not going to hurt, is it? No, it wasn't going to hurt. And I knew if he did, if he did launch one, that's him. That's him. In, in he's done. In, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Blimey. Yeah. It's one of those moments that always comes up, doesn't it? Um, it's just, yeah. But you know, and this and this is the lovely part of this. Me, me and Matt actually get on really well now. I really, I tell you why, because we've been honest with each other. Yeah. And yeah. there were some things I thought, oh, do you know what? Is this going on? And it, and it was. And some things he thought, is this going on? And it, and it was. And there were some things, some moments happened on track where he went, I went, yeah, sorry. And vice versa. And do you know what? I'm fine with that. And so is he. And we get on, we get on really well, actually. Really well. Which really is great. Well. Which is and, great. And it's just about being, you know, I've got lots of respect for, you know, for, for, for Matt and what they've achieved. And it's amazing. Um, and it's about the honesty thing. If you can look at each other in the eye and be just dead honest. Yeah. Great. That's all you can, that's all you can ask of anyone, isn't it? Yeah. And do you know what? Okay. I've done some shitty things in my career. <clears throat> On and off track, and, and vice versa. We all have, but you've got to have the ability to look each other in the eyes and be be honest about it. Absolutely. And it's not it's not because we just it's because it's we're competitive for human beings. You know, we're, we're focused, and it means yeah. so much. So you you know, you do whatever you need to do. Um, but and we, we we laugh about some of the moments now, where literally six years ago we were ripping each other heads off yeah. about the same but, moment. But now we can share a beer. Yeah, which is which is exactly how it should be. Yeah. You know, it's, I mean, it's I mean, I will say it's fucking tight. Not very good to get the beers in. <laughs> right, to see that at some oh, point. I'm up for it because I literally, I mean, look at me. I need sleep. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, well, my old my oldest woke up at half past four this morning, so that was great. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, you've got you know bits to get through the the latter end of your career and all the funny stories from the book. Well, tell you what, I can't wait till next year. Let's do it in the next ne next two weeks. F find a night, we'll sort it out. Um, well, that's my deal. I've got two things lined up that we'll have to sort out. Um, I'll have a look. Take it, it. Next, next two weeks, so you can get fucked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll see what we can do. We'll try and you talk get to your people to speak to my people and we'll organize it. <laughs> <laughs> Very quickly, I just want to say thank you. This was at the end of last season. You signed that. I don't know if you remember. Sign McNally. Yes, I do. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sign McNally brought that in. Feet to sausage. Uh, James Gibson Artworks. Talented man. Break it too hard there. From, from breaks of light. Yeah. yeah. Top top job. But yeah. yeah. Thank right. you very much for signing that. That was brilliant. Um, yes, we will. Sort of, we will sort of I'll things. I'll tell you what, Rich, you wouldn't mind. Can you, can you send me a transcript of the questions and stuff and then we'll try and get through some of those next time yeah i'm possible? sure i can uh i'm sure i can do that i can do i'll copy and paste the magic one and um then we'll do it good all right and uh I'll I'll go, mate, it's, jesus it's christ proper late it's quarter to 11 it's bedtime um but no jason thanks thanks so much for coming thank on you. absolutely brilliant thank you everyone for tuning in and we will do it again soon two Great weeks or see you later <laughs> Ta -ta.